Georgia. Kevin Grubb for Virginia and Missouri's Tony Roper. Ohio's Lonnie Rush and Brian Cunningham from Kentucky. Wisconsin's Brian Reffner and Morgan Shepard, Winston Cup star. Jay Sauter has a win this season and Doug George, the Winston West champ, driving hurt. Terry Cook from Ohio and Billy Pouch, the New Jersey modified star. Dan Press from Washington and Boris Said, the road racer. Toby Butler from Washington State and Randy McDonald from Canada. Mike Cope from Florida and Pennsylvania's Danny Heber. Let's look at the manufacturer's breakdown in today's field. 16 Fords, 15 Chevrolets, 5 Dodges. Chevrolet holds the winning edge this year with 6. And the race is analysis. It's a 200 lap race, 200 miles. It's a two segment race. The first segment will be 101 laps, second segment 99 laps. And it's open pit. That is, you can pit anytime under green, but you cannot change tires. You can do almost anything else, but you cannot change tires. If you do, it's a five lap penalty per tire that you might change. The fuel window here today is about 75 to 85 laps. It's okay. I have to make that break in here, I think, because it follows Buddy. Six. Yours. Nice music. Yeah. Sounds like kind of. Uh, they changed the uh, way they had the uh, trucks listed. They did. Yeah. Did you notice on the manufacturer's breakdown? Oh no. <laughs> they had a different. Oh. Different deal there. I was going to go. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I thought y'all had changed the uh, trucks there. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to have you hand me this list when we get to it, and then we'll put it up on the wall. But I can't read it off there and look. You you know. Put it up there? Uh, it kind of blocks a lot of the window. No. We can just keep it there for now. 16 Fords. And I lost right. my format. I have left it outside. My format. Nope, there it is. Okay. It's not the format. Okay.
<laughs> yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Am I? Oh, that's through my mic. Okay. I was hearing crap of PA, and this was right through this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Gail O'Connor says she's ready to go home. <laughs> Good. How you doing? She just Can you give us arrived. Ninety seconds to do a stand up here. Uh, I'll just I'll kind of point to you. Friday. We're about Me too. Two minutes from that. Thank you. One minute to air. <laughs> that was a good shot of me, don't you think, from the side? <laughs> the, the, oh, God. The best smelling blimp in the booth. I don't think so. <laughs> I know. That, that, that's the... Uh, <clears throat> Compelling action is on CBS Sports. Hello, I'm Bob McKenna, president of Napa Auto Parts. And on behalf of all of our employees across the nation, we want to welcome you to today's CBS broadcast of the Napa Auto Care 200. Napa has a strong commitment to motorsports and to NASCAR racing. We hope that you enjoy the race. Everybody knows pickup trucks are tough but the track they race on have proved even tougher. It's all come into focus this year for Wisconsin's Rich Bickle, the series point leader. Bickle leads a trio of drivers who've each carried two payloads to victory lane including defending series champ Ron Hornaday and the talented rookie Kenny Irwin Jr. But don't forget the master of the mile track, Jack Sprague, defending champion of this race. They're all ready to go flat out trucking today on the Nazareth Mile. Welcome to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Today, from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, the Napa Auto Care 200. It's the first of four straight weekends of NASCAR truck racing you'll see live on CBS, plus the season finale at Las Vegas in November. Nice crowd on hand here, getting set to see these trucks go at it. And what a competitive series it's been, with seven different winners in the 10 races thus far. The man who's seeking to become the eighth different winner this year sits on the pole. Dick Bergeron is with him. Has three of these truck wins. So far, none this year, but he came off the truck fast as a rocket. He's been fast throughout practice. He has won the pole. Mike, what's the strategy to win your first this year right here at Nazareth? Well, you know, Dick, just keep it out front all these trucks. We're going to work our dangest, our darndest, to keep this thing out front. And uh, we've, we've practiced real good. We qualified excellent right on the pole. We're just going to hope that our, our setup is good for this heat and 200 laps. Starting outside him will be Rich Bickle. He is the points leader, so Bickle's really got two jobs to do today. One, Bickle's got to protect that point lead, but two, he wants to win the race. How do you do both? Well, Dick, you know, if you, if you win the race, you got enough for the points. So uh, we're just looking forward to running hard today. You know, we're like that rabbit and the hare. The old two truck, he's the rabbit, and I'm kind of the hare. I'm just kind of, I mean, the turtle. You know, he can, he can go really fast for a lot of laps. I'm seeing like I'm more consistent. Hopefully that he'll take off and I can catch back up to him. So we'll see what happens today. 
Now that ought to be interesting. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. It's already been a good week for Ron Hornaday. Brand new gold paint scheme to commemorate his championship in this series last year and a new three-year deal to continue as a driver for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Ron's already strapped in now, ready to go racing. Let's talk about the fuel strategy for this one, Ron. Green flag pit stops, what will you do? Well, I don't think we've talked about it yet. We're just going to see what this Napa Chevrolet does. Uh, try to get about 40 laps and see if we can come in. Uh, that's what Fred's talking to me on the radio now. We're going to try to get the 40 laps and see what we can do and come on in. Ron will roll off fifth today, but there's one driver starting just in front of him who would like to put a damper on this good week for Ron. That's Jack Sprague. He starts third today, and Mike, he was the winner here last year. He's won five of the last six-mile races. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy with Ned Jarrett, and we've been here all weekend in this unique racetrack. Is it a tri-oval? Is it an oval with a dog leg? Does it have six turns, eight turns? Nobody can agree. It's really different. Oh, it's unique to say the least, Mike. It's a five-turn racetrack that has presented quite a challenge for the drivers. Let's take a lap around it. Start at the start finish line, quickly get into turn one, then over to turn two, then a sharp turn off turn three, downhill to the back stretch in turn four, and then sharp turn off turn five to the start finish line. Two trouble spots we expect here today, turn one and turn three. It's been quite a challenge for the drivers and the teams to set a truck up here varying degrees of banking in these turns, not much in any of them, but you, if you set a truck up to get through one turn good, you're going to give up something somewhere else. So it presents quite a challenge to them. It's a track that requires compromise, and among the faces we'll see today, Jay Sauter driving for Richard Childress. He has a win so far this year at New Hampshire. And let's look out for Kenny Irwin. He already has two wins as a rookie this year, but has never seen this track until this weekend. Nor has Tony Raines, the ASA champion, got the first big win for Dodge in 20 years at Missouri. Now here's a man that has some experience on this track and also on road courses, Joe Rutman. This track, some drivers say, has a lot of characteristics of the road courses. And Jimmy Hensley, the man who started on the pole here last year. Hensley drove to a second place finish and came oh so close to victory lane. Now, earlier today, Buddy Baker gave us a look at Jimmy Hensley's truck. You'll see some things that look familiar and maybe some that don't. Let's take a look at a Craftsman truck. Very similar to a Winston Cup car. Engine size exactly the same. 9 to 1 compression, 14 to 1 in Winston Cup. This thing produces 700 horsepower. Its cousin, the Winston Cup car, hey, it's only got 740. So this thing is a bona fide racer. 59 inches tall on the roof up here. Winston Cup has to be 51 inches tall. That lets the air in the Winston Cup car follow the roof line. You don't have to worry about that with the truck. As the air comes over, it gets on this long bed back here, putting a lot of downforce on the back spoiler, making this baby a lot of fun. I've driven these things. They are fun to drive and fast. Thanks, buddy. They have fired engines here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania, but let's leave Nazareth for a moment. Last night in Las Vegas, Evander Holyfield defended his heavyweight title against Mike Tyson. But after the third round, Tyson was disqualified. For more on the fight, here's Jim Nance. For two rounds, it looked like Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson were on track for a heavyweight classic. Holyfield won the first round as he briefly staggered Tyson against the ropes with a three-punch flurry. He also had the edge in round two and opened the cut over Tyson's right eye with what appeared to be an accidental headbutt. This fight had been billed as the sound of the fury, and in the end, the fury was quite apparent. Feeling victimized by the second round headbutt, Tyson was in a rage by round three. With the two locked in a tangle, Tyson bit Holyfield's right ear and sent the champion screaming in pain. At ringside, it was plain to see right away that Holyfield was missing a small piece of his outer ear. But then the scene turned even more bizarre. Referee Mills Lane. I didn't see the first bite, but I looked at his ear. You could see the bite and He said he bit me. So I called time. I got the doctor in. So the doctor says he could go on. He, he, he could fight. So I penalized Tyson two points, intentional for the bite. They go again about... 30 seconds, he jumps back, and he, I look, he's bit him again. And then he said, it's a punch. He said, don't give me that crap, man. You bit him. I said, that's it. You're gone. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Like I got children to raise. And this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped off cut. I got to retaliate. I mean, it's just an easy way to get out of the fight, the foul, because you know you're going to get disqualified instead of fighting through. I'm saying that don't show no courage whatsoever. Everybody know how to get out of the fight. All you have to do is foul. You'll get yourself out. Then you can say, well, he didn't beat me. 
A hospital spokesman says surgeons successfully reattached the piece of Holyfield's ear. He's been released. The Nevada State Athletic Commission will meet Tuesday to discuss possible sanctions. Well, the headbutting today will all be done with the bumpers on these race <laughs> trucks. Here's how they'll line up. Mike Bliss is on the pole in a Ford. Rich Bickle, a point leader in a Chevrolet. Jack Sprague, the mile track master, and David Green from the Winston Cup Series. Row three, series champ Ron Hornaday and Jimmy Hensley, runner-up here last year. Tony Raines already has a win this year, and Michael Dawkin, pole sitter at Tucson. Chuck Bowne in a Ford, and Rick Corelli from Denver in a Chevy. Stacy Compton from Virginia in a Ford, and Dave Rosendis from Massachusetts Chevrolet. From Michigan, Bob Keselowski in a Dodge, as is Butch Miller, also from Michigan. From Oklahoma, Lance Norick and Joe Rutman from California in Fords. Row 9, Rob Rizzo for Providence and Kenny Irwin from Indy, both in Fords. In the 10th row, Alabama's Rick Crawford and Tammy Joe Kirk from Georgia in Fords. Row 11, the Chevy of Virginia's Kevin Grubb and Tony Roper from Missouri in a Ford. Lonnie Rush in a Chevy from Ohio and Ford mounted is Brian Cunningham from Kentucky. Brian Reffner, last year's Rookie of the Year and Morgan Shepard, the Winston Cup star. Then it's Jay Sauter who already has a win and Doug George driving hurt. Terry Cook in a Chevy and Billy Pouch from New Jersey, the modified ace. Dan Press from the West Coast and road racer Boris Said. Toby Butler from out west and Randy McDonald from Canada. Then Mike Cope from Florida and Pennsylvania star Danny Heber. Here's your manufacturer's breakdown. Today, four, or 16 Fords, 15 Chevrolets, 5 Dodges. You can see Chevrolet le leads the win column with 6 wins this year. And a race analysis, 200 laps. Two segment race, 101 laps, then they'll go 99 at the end. Open pit. They can pit on green flag. Do anything they want to do to the truck except in change tires. If they change tires, you're in a green flag pit stop. It's five laps penalty per tire. Fuel wind about 75 to 85 laps. We'll be riding along in six different trucks today, and we'll meet them in a moment. 86 degrees, sun drenched crowd, light breeze, partly cloudy, and we're coming to green. Here they come through turn number four and coming to the tunnel turn here at Nazareth what we call turn five on this five cornered racetrack. Two Dodges side by side of Reigns and Dockett and the Chevy pace truck is in. Everybody up through the gears and we're racing on the Nazareth Mile. clean start. Yeah, as they head down the back straightaway and into turn four, you can see three wide. They have to be at least two wide when they get to that corner, so somebody has to give early in the race. I think they'll go sort of easy here the first ten or so laps because it was a good fourth race run earlier here today. Uh -oh. Just as I say <laughs> that, here's trouble. Terry Cook uh, rolls a gutter ball spinning around. No caution. That's a turn five. No caution. Well, now there might be here trouble again. Boy, that's Butch, Butch Miller. Miller. Tough break for Butch Miller on the very second lap of the race. And when the caution waves in the truck series, racing ceases. They do not race back to the line, so we're under yellow. Mike, you can see right there, Kenny Irwin Jr. right there against the inside wall in the 98 truck. He was apparently involved there. Butch Miller had some damage to the left front corner and left rear on his truck. Butch Miller is one of those that we thought might have a good shot at this race today because he likes flat racetracks. He has uh, probably the better part of the deal and smoke puffing from the right side of Bob Keselowski's Mopar Dodge. And there's why. Look at the right front. My Headbutt. Head yeah, buddy. head butt, but let me tell you what happens. This racetrack, we talked about it being unique. It is very unique because somebody has to give, somebody takes a little bit, and if you don't give a little bit getting into these flat corners, somebody's going around. Buddy, I think most of that smoke, though, was not from the tire rub, but from that right side exhaust pipe. It did look like it was coming from the exhaust mm. pipe, so that could be trouble, and maybe that's what even started the whole deal. Let's see. Let's show you what happened from Bob Keselowski's onboard camera. Okay, there he's going into the turn. There goes Butch Miller by him on the outside and gets tapped from the rear as he moved in, tried to get down on the inside groove. Keselowski, Keselowski couldn't see anything there for a moment. And then he gets down on pit oh, road, and here oh. comes Kenny Irwin across in front of him, and major damage done to both trucks right there. 
Harper when it already piled hard into somebody. You saw him coming across with a lot of damage already to the left front. Mike, that's one thing that happens on a flat racetrack. You're trying to get track position back on the bottom part of the racetrack. And that part over there, you want right down on the white line. Apparently, Kazalowski was already there. Butch Miller come down. He didn't see him. They made contact, and that set a trigger reaction off. One thing we can't see, though, from that replay angle is whether or not Miller might have been bumped from the rear when he and Keselowski got together. Hard to say. Well, you look at the right front corner, and it's gnawed up pretty good. So he did get into somebody right there before. Here's what Morgan Shepard saw from his onboard camera in the Cat City, USA, number 13. Well, it's already started happening up there pretty far up. You can see that right up in that area, it's already happening in front of Morgan. Okay, Ned. Most people don't realize visibility is another problem. You see the trucks going into the smoke up there. They cannot see what's on the racetrack in front of them, hardly. And look at Morgan Shepard. He decided to get over on the pit lane, but said, uh-oh, that closed up also. I'll get out in the grass then to try that. So he made it. A little defensive driving going on early at Nazareth. We told you this was a tough racetrack. Already they've proved it. Miller and get an interview with Keselowski. Nice. Nice stuff. Yeah. Good start. Do you want to send a camera down here for this interview or do you just want to do it audio? You want the camera down there? I'll send the camera if you'd like him to go. Dick, he's just past the break if your cameraman does come down this way. Okay. All right. Why don't you go down to Ralph with Keselowski? Well, just past the break, he's the only truck that's sitting on pit road. He did? Okay. All right, great. Thank you. You'll be able to see him right there. The uh, ambulance is going in right now. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. 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 No, that's going out on the line when you make that call, but he did come across. Now, whether he yes. got hit first, you can't it tell, like he was, you know, from a distance. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought he got bumped from the rear. I don't well, know. we'll but see. It, it's hard to tell. I don't know. It don't take much no, there. No, no. Back end of that oh, no. truck You're probably right. waits. CBS Sports coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Mobile One 100% Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. First caution of the day at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Butch Miller has rejoined the race. Work continues on Bob Keselowski's truck and Kenny Irwin took the ride in the ambulance over to the care center but climbed out walked into the care center under his own power and looked to be okay after a hard hit to the wall and then a hard hit in the driver's door from Bob Keselowski green flag as we restart this race Mike Bliss out in front of Jack Sprague the third truck there you can see Hornaday putting a lot of heat on Jack Sprague as they head in under the tunnel there towards turn three uh, I think Hornaday right now, you can see right here the truck working very well, low off that corner, and right out as they head down the hill on the back straightaway. Hornaday started fifth, running third. And you're riding with the defending champion of the Craftsman Truck Series, Ron Hornaday from Palmdale, California. Trouble, turn five, Tammy Jo Kirk has spun, and a big pack of cars had to work to miss her. You can see there on the back of the truck, she got hit in the back end, probably turned her around there. No, no caution. caution. Ned, that's a tight part of the racetrack as they come through four and start to accelerate out of turn number five. And Tammy Jo is about the same spot where she spun in qualifying. She did on her second lap of qualifying. She got loose coming off that turn. Speaking for Tammy Jo, though, you can see the back part of the truck. Somebody really popped her in the back there and set her around. Uh, that was not her own doing. She's about half a lap behind the race leaders. And let's show you what happened to Tammy Jo Kirk. Well, that's after she got touched, but right dead behind, you can see the back of the truck there is caved in where somebody really got into the back of her, apparently getting into turn four. 
leaders across the stripe. Nine laps complete. Mike Bliss. Green truck is Jack Sprague. Ron Hornaday in an unfamiliar gold paint scheme. And then point leader Rich Bickle. You can see Jack Sprague in second place there. Now that they're going back under the green, Hornaday gets great restarts, but now you see Sprague getting away from him just a little bit. Mike Bliss, of course, has been fast all week, but it looks like Sprague had everything in the world to work with there. It looks like he might be the fastest truck out there. One of the trucks involved in that incident was Bob Keselowski. Ralph Shaheen has more. Well, the driver of the big Mopar number 29 is done. Bob, what happened to you? Motor let go of coming right down the front straightaway. Instead of dropping out cylinders really quick. And I think the yellow is coming out anyhow for something going on behind us, but no place to go. And uh, I think Butch Miller was behind me and he had to check up because then all of a sudden we got close turn one. It just let go. I had no power. When he checked up behind me, somebody must have tagged him and that started the whole deal down there. Nobody had any place to go. And I was kind of dead in the water there in front of him. Mike, an update on Butch Miller as well. It's mostly cosmetic, but he did bend up the fuel filler area. They're talking already about the difficulties they're going to have under those green flag pit stops trying to get Butch Miller a full fuel tank. Thanks, Ralph. Well, we got a brief look from the Mopar performance camera on Bob Keselowski's truck, but he is done for the day, joining Kenny Irwin Jr., who was the rookie point leader coming into this race in the garage area. Battle for this lead is heating up. It is that. You can see them. The Bliss truck in front there, the number two truck, is beginning to wash out just a little bit, getting in the corner. Jack Sprague able to hold the left front right down on the white line through the sharp parts of the corner. Now, we talked in the open about how you have to compromise on this racetrack. Does it look in the early going as if there's one part of this racetrack where Sprague is better than Bliss? Well, if I had to say, I would say getting in. You see him gain some, almost a full truck left getting in. But when you're following a truck, you can really gain on him by his weakness. When he starts to break, you come in hard. But you can see Sprague is all over the tailgate there. Yeah, he runs in him going into the turn, but he's able to stay there also And when they're coming off. So it does look like Sprague's truck is a little bit faster right now, but can he get by? Watching for the Team ASE truck, uh, Mike Bliss's Ford. Somebody better do something. You see Sprague going to the inside now as they start. Bliss comes over, checks on him, but I tell you, Hornaday's in this thing right now, too. Close call down there in the corner, and there's room for Jack Sprague. Here he comes. He's going to drag Hornaday with him. Well, that happens now. Right now, Bliss is in a big... Oh, look at Hornaday get sideways off the corner there. And Bliss will drop back in line third in front of Rich Bickle. And that new truck, number 37, you've not seen before, but that's David Green, the former Bush Series champion and now Winston Cup regular. He's in the top five. He's had a lot of success on this racetrack. He's won a couple of poles here, I believe, and uh, run well in the NASCAR Bush Series. Mike, that corner right there, you start off turn three, it's off camber. It really does not show that much, but it is off camber just a little bit. When you start off the truck, wash it right out against the wall. Very touchy spot. And one of Ned's exes. <laughs> Back to turn one comes Spray. And let's get an update from Dick Bergren on the rookie point leader, Kenny Irwin. Well, Kenny Irwin's truck is really bent. The suspension on the truck is well out of shape. There are a bunch of lines cut, twisted. The crew is underneath it working. That's the bad news. The good news is Kenny Irwin is here. Kenny, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, it's just terrible. This is the second week in a row that uh, we just had bad luck, and um, and this comes so early in the race. It's, it's just, I don't know. I just don't know what, what everybody's doing up there. They, they just run into each other, and I don't know. It's just, just really bad for this Bray Bester's crew. They work their butt off, and uh, and you know they just don't deserve this. And neither does Kenny Irwin. Terrell. In the spin that took Tammy Jo Kirk around, she lost the rear spoiler on her truck. So now, Mike, she has lost all the rear downpours. Tammy Jo getting lapped, as was Danny Heber. Mike, she hadn't lost it. What happens when she got hit in the back there, it actually laid it down. You can see it's still there, but it's laid back because of the crunch there in the back end that flattened the spoiler down on it. Well, hopefully they can work on that at halftime. Ned, we talked about compromising the corner setup, but with a long downhill straightaway and a couple of shorter uphill ones, gear choice is pretty critical here, too. It really is, Mike. It, you, you have to either decide to turn the engine a lot of RPMs on the longer straightaway or either compromise there to 
to save the engine, not turn the RPMs on these shorter straightaways. So I'm sure that we got a variety of gears in the trucks here today. I talked to several drivers yesterday. They're running 486 gears, and most of them are. And they're turning 8,700 down the back chute, 8,300 up the front chute because it is uphill coming towards the start finish line. A lot of RPM for a 9 to 1 compression engine. Look a little further back at the field. There's Jimmy Hensley, last year's runner up, just in front of the yellow truck of Tony Raines. Hensley running in sixth. Michael Dockin in blue and white. Then Tammy Joe Kirk a lap down. You're watching from Jimmy Hensley, the Cummins engine. Dodge camera. That is a great shot right there. You can see how much pressure the air is pushing down on this long head uh, plate that they have there. You can see it actually pushing down, and that spoiler is doing the job. Rain's looking out a little wide there, but drops back in. Try to catch a little draft off of Tammy Cho as they come back to turn one here. There's your leader, Jack Sprague. And actually, they've distanced themselves from each other, too, Mike. We're, you can see there's pretty good distance back to the 16 truck of Ron Hornaday. Hornaday. Boy, that win last week for Hornaday at Bristol was one he felt he really needed. He'd had three straight races finishing out of the top 20. He finally put it together last Saturday night. Certainly did in fine fashion, too, leading all 200 laps. See Tony Raines there in the 19 uh, yellow truck there. That's the Dodge, and right behind him is uh, that's Michael Dockin. These are team trucks. Kurt right. Rohrer Yes, they the are, and they're running very much equal right now. I think Tony Raines is going to be a winner week after week, as soon as he gets a little more experience on these racetracks. Has one victory, but only one other top 10 finish. That came at Portland for Tony Raines, the ASA champion. Michael Dockin right behind him has a third place finish this year at Monroe Washington and that's his only top 10 finish and right behind Michael Dockin is the truck number 99 the Exide battery is Ford of Chuck Bound. Chuck in the ninth position yeah, Chuck won practice yesterday but <laughs> that didn't pay anything no let me it tell you what though, that makes up. you sleep well when you yeah. when you win practice and uh, he is a very very good road racer and most of the guys say this is like driving a road course through the corner. But these long straightaways, they use the brakes a lot down the back straightaway, like getting in the first turn at Martinsville. Now you can see this group is starting to roll up on David Green, the fifth place truck. Hensley in sixth on the left side of your screen. Oh, oh. Brian Cunningham goes around. The grandson open wheel. Yes. of the famous Briggs Cunningham. Caution is out. His granddad raced at Le Mans with cars built in the United States and won the America's Cup. And those Le Mans cars in the early 50s carried this same paint scheme. Now, is the fuel window open? It okay. Should. Well, they said around 27 to 30 laps, so we'll see. They're gone uh, 25, so there's some debris on the racetrack. Somebody just hit it. They'll need to come in and check those tires. Now, if they run a couple of laps under caution, that may force somebody's hand to give it a try and get that good track position later on when everybody else has to stop. Well, yep. if, if they say they can go 75 to, to 85 laps, well, certainly we, we're going to have less than 75 to go from here on, and it probably would be better to come in and pit early. That's my opinion, but... So you'd stop early. Buddy, would you would you go to run out that tank, or would you come in early? I believe I'd come in early because you may not have another caution. You don't want to stop under the green if you can help it. The way it's been going, though, I'd say there'll be another caution. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I think I'd pay, uh, favor pitting early and then work your way back up through track position as the trucks ahead of you drop well, in. The well, here's running. our answer right yeah. now. So Jack Sprague leads Mike Bliss, Rich Bickle, David Green, and Tony Raines, Jimmy Hensley on to pit road, Michael Dockin, Chuck Bown, Rick Corelli, Dave Resendiz, Joe Rutman all come in, but uh, Ron Hornaday stays out. Here's Dick Bergeron. Well, Jack Sprague is in here right now, and Danny Atkins is putting the fuel in it. Surprisingly, Ron Hornaday, who is right up in front of him, has chosen not to pit. He is staying outside on the racetrack. Quick burst of fuel, but the sign man at the end of pit road is holding the ball up until the field goes by. Field is passed, and there they go. 
Or did they get not hit? And Rich Bickle beat Jack Sprague off pit road. Mike, let's explain something. You notice nobody takes on tires. We Better need not. to talk about that just a little bit. There's a real penalty if you take on tires on pit stops. Let's show you first what happened to Boris said from the Federated Auto Parts 1-800 collect camera. Looks like he touched the uh, Ford truck of Brian Cunningham just a little bit. Cunningham has continued and made a pit stop. Yes, if you change tires other than at halftime and the tire is not flat or otherwise damaged, uh, the inspector will call it as a negative tire change, and that's a five-lap penalty per tire. So that's why you saw no tire changes on these pit stops. David Green back in. Mm. Let's see what he does. They're working on that spoiler there, beating it up. Look, mm -hmm. they got that hammer just wailing it. Also, Danny because he was dropping back. Yeah. He really was. Uh, could you either open me up to the... Hi, Dick. Floor? I hear you. Hello, uh, Dick. Uh, we probably ought to explain to you what Hornaday's guy said to yeah. me because we ought to explain it to the folks back I agree. Home, which is that he can't make it all the way if he pits this early. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's Good a point. huge disadvantage. Yeah. yeah, we definitely need to explain that. Why yeah. did he do it? Yeah. You yeah. want to let Freddie Graves explain it? Okay. Great. Tell Freddie he told me a misdemeanor then. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have mentioned Shepherds once. Yes, sir. Correct. It sounds like a drum in yeah. my ear. Yeah. All right, we'll have Freddie Graves when right. we come out of this break. It's going to be a couple minutes. Eric, what I'd like to do is, after we get back racing, throw to Dick after the trucks go by him on whatever lap it is. So we go to him. Boris has got a little bit of stuff hanging off the right the corner, too. Okay. I can add a couple of others, too. Reigns, Cunningham, and Roper. Look at this. Getting set for the restart after this second caution of the day for Brian Cunningham's spin. Back under green. And Ron Hornaday and Tammy Joe Kirk got together just a bit there, heading for turn one. Hornaday, one of the few leaders who did not pit during his first caution period. For the reason why, Dick Bergeron. Richie, everybody else came in, Freddie. You guys did not. Why not? Well, we would have liked to, but according to our calculations, we just wouldn't make it the rest of the way. Uh, we'd have to stop again, so... We just had to stay out. What will you do now? You cannot make it all the way without fuel, can you? No, we got to stop one more time, but this would have been too early. We could, we'd have to stop twice. Mike? Interesting strategy. We'll see how it plays out. Well, if the others that did stop, even if they have, if he's able to stop during a caution, he's going to be at the back of all of those trucks. And, boy, that's going to be tough. But if you can't make it, I mean, you know, he had no choice. Hornaday, Lance Norick, Rob Rizzo, Boris Said, and Kevin Grubb did not stop. Everyone else came in for fuel. You're riding in the Napa Brakes Chevrolet of Ron Hornaday. You see the gap he has on the rest of the field. Black flag out for Billy Pouch. And around goes Grubb in the 55. The 19-year-old from Virginia will bring out the caution. Mike, one of the day. Just a second ago, he was all over the racetrack. He was very, very loose. And you see what happens on a flat racetrack. You keep running a loose truck, it's eventually going to get you. Rich Bickle was on the inside of him as they went through turn one and then into turn two. You can see that tire mark right there on that truck where Bickle apparently got into him just a little bit as they were battling for that position, which was sixth.
If we get enough yellows, we'll be okay. Listening to Freddie Graves. Already clear. And that's Kevin Cram, the other spotter for Ron Hornaday. Having that discussion with Graves. So we'll get set for a restart. And probably just one more lap. Copy. Ed, the sign. Ron Hornaday ready to go to work. One more lap, we'll get a restart. Lindy Hornaday looking on. Yeah, Oops. stay up. <laughs> you can see him pull it down there. He pulls it into second gear, anticipating what he, what the gear he probably will start in is uh, second gear, Ned, and up through the gearbox. Nobody is better than Ron Hornaday on a restart. He might have learned a lot of that from Dale Earnhardt, or he might have already known it before he started driving for Dale Earnhardt, but they're both very good at it. Getting set for the restart here. That's Lance Norick. NHL number 90 melting here in the 86 degree heat. They're in second place. And Rob Rizzo still nursing that shoulder, I think, from that crash down at Homestead, Florida earlier this year. But Rizzo is up to third place, the former SCCA Trans Am racer. And Jack Sprague, the first of the trucks who pitted under the earlier caution, is fourth. Here's Dick Bergren. Well, interesting round. Hornaday still has not come in. He is going to have to make a pit stop, but he has not made one so far. Neither has the 90 of Norick. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise that they have not come in already as the green flag comes out. They are going to have to pit. No one can make it all the way, we don't think. Two people hate. that did take advantage of that earlier pit stop, Mike, were Tony Range, who came in and took fuel. He currently runs in eighth. And, of course, Mike Bliss. Bliss was a little bit loose. They came in, put one round in, tightened him up, bumped up the spoil a little bit, filled him up with fuel. Crew Chief Barry Dodson says they're going to be just fine now. They've run 35 of 200 laps. Ron Hornaday brings them off turn five. And you can see the green truck of Jack Sprague has already gotten back up there after making his pit stop right on the back bumper. Lance Norick. Now he's passed Rob Rizzo in that blue and yellow Ford. This is Rizzo. And here goes Sprague to work on the second place truck down that long back stretch, and he outdives Norick into turn four. It must be nice to handle that well down the straightaway. You can see he <laughs> pulled out there. I'm telling you, that 24 truck is a rocket ship. When he mashed it down on it, he just drove right on by Lance Norick and put about two truck laps on him down the back chute. Where's Boris? Here he is on the move. Right now in fifth place. Moving up on Rob Rizzo. You know, Ernie Irvin says, Boris says, has great talent. He, he looks forward to him moving up in the sport. He has a lot of knowledge as far as what to do to set the, the truck up. He has my favorite helmet from my favorite TV show ever, <laughs> Boris Badenoff. <laughs> That's bad enough. You know what that looks like. Cotton Owens one time when we blew an engine with three laps to go in Daytona. <laughs> That's exactly what I saw when I pulled in the pit. Boris said it worked. Won the 24 hours of Daytona. Went up and ran the 12 hours of Sebring. Very accomplished road racer. And he's found quite a coach in Ernie Irvin. They have quite a relationship. They spend a lot of time on the phone when they're not at the same racetrack together on a weekend. Looking back from Boris Sett's truck. And that's Rich Bickle just behind him there in the 17 truck. Mike Bliss in the two, the blue truck right behind Bickle. Now Boris said did not stop on that caution flag. Nor did Lance Norick and Ron Hornaday and Rob Rizzo. So three of the top five drivers did not stop. And in truck racing, when you don't take on tires, there's no big, huge advantage of Trucks coming out of the pits on new rubber and blasting up through the field. Doesn't happen here. You can see Bliss, we're riding with him now down the back straightaway. You can see he has good straightaway speed getting in the corner there. He closes up about a half a truck length. Bickle now starting down towards the front straightaway. They're very, very even. Hello, here's <laughs> Jack oh. Sprague. <laughs> That's a look-see that didn't happen there. 
What, what do you feel like when somebody gets into you, into you like that? Well, you know they're there, and you're kind of anticipating it. So these two guys have raced enough against each other. They're going to do that just to get out of the mirror and make you wonder where they're at anyhow. Is, like, is that like a boxer just kind of pushing off, just kind of measuring the other fighter exactly when you get a little tap right. like that? Where's he at? I don't see him in the mirror. Is he at right or left? And all of a sudden, you feel a little touch back here. Hey, I'm still here. No biting, Jack. All right. Mike Bliss has just passed Rich Bickle there. Close there. Mike Bliss on the move. Jimmy Smith's forward. He was the pole setter. Back up front. Sprague to the inside. And Hornaday to the inside. <laughs> now that is a Dale Earnhardt move right there. Hornaday learned well, but you can see Sprague didn't give up. He stayed in the throttle on the outside, went right back in the lead. And on the left side of your screen, you saw Kenny Irwin Jr. coming back into the race. You know, one advantage of pitting early, if, if you do have enough fuel to go the rest of the way, is that if your truck needs an adjustment, get it early so that you can can go on out and uh, make up some time. Ralph Shaheen? Ned, all this racing up front with Jack Sprague might all be for naught. Rob Rizzo's crew chief, Mike Albernaz, has just told me on that last restart, Jack Sprague passed them on the inside before the start-finish line. They have complained to NASCAR. If NASCAR agrees and goes along with that, that would mean a stop-and-go penalty for Jack Sprague and the end of him up front. Wow. We'll just have to wait and see. Right now, we don't see a flag, and it looks like Sprague's in the lead today. And most of the time, those type penalties are called right uh, as soon as it happens. You can see Bless now working on Boris Sedd, and right behind him, Bickle. These guys are really racing very, very close to the flat part of this racetrack. If you touch somebody right there, the back of that truck does not weigh 10 pounds. I guarantee you'll turn you right around. Mike Bliss had a tough outing last week in Bristol. He is underneath, Boris said. That's the fast way around here. Start finish line, turn one. Oh, said tries to get back in line. Rich Whoa. Bickle's there. Be careful. Well, he did. <laughs> Rich Bickle was careful because he's the points leader. Had to think of the big picture there for a moment. Smart driving. Give and take. That's no penalty on Jack. Excuse me, that's Butch Miller there in the 20 truck. He had damage in the first part of the race. You can see he's really off the pace right now. Usually Butch Miller's a front runner. And no penalty on Jack Sprague, we're told. Uh, from the folks over at NASCAR, the official's booth. Looking back from the Team ASE Ford of Mike Bliss. And Jack Sprague is our leader over Ron Hornaday and Lance Norris. CBS Sports coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. Yeah, we can give you a strategy piece on Bliss. We can also give you some interesting voice on the 24 spring and his domination on the miles. Whichever you would prefer. You can tell a story about either man. I have a great race there in just a second. Yeah. Then, uh, I'm done. I'll be. Okay, I, I'm down here on the other side of pit road. I can do, uh, looking at who I got on the board, I can either do Bliss or stick with Rizzo. Uh, those are the guys up at the front of my half of the road. Okay. Eric, was I to read that card? Okay. Thanks, sorry for the mix-up. You know, we've heard from the people that didn't stop. I wouldn't mind hearing from Jack Sprague's group, group. Can they make it? Well, Boris just got roughed up by Tony Raines. That, uh, 19, that 1944 battle. In fact, Boris is backing up. Yeah. Here comes Chuck. Chuck's down here now. Oh, Boris said must have a tire going down. He just went all the way up to the wall. I think he to get hit. up there. 44, Kathy. He's, he's got problems. Nick will go down to 44. We'll see. He 
backing up pretty quick here. Stop my right. Dick is going to set 44. Oh, look at this. 17 and uh, Norrell. Bickle. Yep. Welcome back to Nazareth. Rich Bickle has moved up. Boris said is backing up. Here's a look at the two leaders. Jack Sprague and Ron Hornaday. Sprague has made his gas stop. Hornaday has not. Separation remains about even between those two. Here's Boris said. He has backed up to just in front of Jimmy Hensley and uh, Ned, you saw it looked like he might have had a tire going down. He got so high up on the racetrack a couple of laps ago while we were in break. Well, he did. He went into turn four and skidded very high, almost hit the wall. He did a good job of keeping it off the wall, but he might have had a little bit of help going. There were a lot of trucks that ran very <laughs> close together going into that turn, and just the slightest bump, as Buddy has mentioned earlier, will send you sliding, and that might have happened. Ned, I've always wondered, why do we call that help? It's anything but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it helped him to get in the slide. No, that's the end of it. Everything when you get touched in the race chart. Said has fallen, fallen to 12th place. Dick Bergeron has more. Well, as far as Boris Set is concerned, his crew doesn't know what's wrong either. He has had a bit of trouble adjusting to this racetrack, which is quite a surprise because Zed is an expert road racer. His strategy this morning was to be patiently aggressive. One of the great goals, don't crash the truck. He has not done that all year long, and right now he is just trying to hang on to it, and they'll adjust it when they come back in here at the 100 lap point. Mike? Thanks, Dick. MCI award goes to truck number two, Mike Bliss, on lap 10. He lapped the track at 124 miles per hour, fastest lap by a leader in the early going here. Still a good race here for third. Or no, no, that's back for six now, isn't it? Right, Lance Norick leading Tony Raines in the yellow truck. He and Michael Dockett have been uh, almost hitched together for this entire race, the two Dodge teammates. Chuck Bound moving in. That's purple and black Ford. And right with him, Stacy Compton. Raines in the yellow truck, the Dodge. He's trying his best to find a way around Lance Norick. You see Chuck Bound there in the 99 truck able to run very, very low. These are some trucks we hadn't talked about very much. This is Rich, that was the Richard Childers number three truck by Jay Sauter. Let's check with Ralph. Mike, Mike Bliss is coming up through the field. He is all the way up to third now. Barry Dodson, his crew chief, didn't want to tighten him up too much because tightening up the truck burns fuel because you end up working on and off the gas because the truck will tend to push up into the turns. They are hoping that the track will get tighter later on, so they want to try to keep Mike as loose as they possibly can out here today. Bliss was second in Miami, third in Phoenix, but only has one top five since that coming in Texas. Riding with Mike Bliss, or rather now with Ron Hornaday. You see Ron's right foot there. He's down on the throttle down as he goes in. You can see him left foot on the brake right there. He's out of the throttle. Now back down nice and easy. Does not break the rear tires loose. You can see him just kind of using that brake very gingerly there, not really jumping on it. This will orient you to Hornaday's position on the racetrack and he comes down the back straight away and here into turn number four. Yeah, you can see him using a little more brake as he gets into turn four there. Now you see his right foot down, not really slamming it down. You have to get back in the throttle pretty easy. Now he's out of it, use the brake there. He's going through turn one, heading for the walk over there. You see him going through turn two, really in the throttle, kind of milking it there, not all the way wide open, kind of easing off just enough to make the truck turn through turn three. Now he's going down the back straightaway. You can see wide open there. Now watch him when he gets down here. He's into the corner now, he's back on the throttle, starting towards turn five, and now down the front straightaway. That's one full lap here at Nazareth. Thank you, Professor Baker. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> Hornaday's in second spot behind Jack Sprague, about one second behind. 
Mike Bliss about four seconds back of them. Moving up on Toby Butler. Driving Kenny Schrader's truck. Toby just a little bit off speed right now. You can see Hornaday making the move, and you see that to Toby Butler did not put up any resistance. He moved to the outside. That comes back to you later on when you're running good, and maybe Hornaday's off a little bit. So Jack Sprague leads from Ron Hornaday. Two Chevys leading two Fords here at Nazareth. Well, if, if Hornaday didn't stop at 30, after 35 laps go, he's going to be stopping here pretty quickly. Hope he can stay on the lead lap, do yeah. it. Yeah. No, they said they could go 75 to 80 well, laps. Well, why didn't he stop when they I don't know. What, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what Fred yeah. thinks. Two pitch. I really don't. It's a two pitch, Ben. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Blitz. Have you talked to uh, Connors or anybody in 24? Yeah, Dick knows what's going on. Well, we need to talk to you. All right. The answer is he is he is not hooked up with the front end of the truck. He's just pushing. It's washing out of the nose on him, buddy. I'm talking about the fuel mileage. Can Sprague go to he halfway? Said, he said yes. OK, yes, that's the important part. OK, so he's all right. He's going to make it a halfway. We were told that Hornaday could not, and well, I couldn't imagine why Horn not. Hornaday absolutely cannot. No well, he's going to have to stop soon. They, to me like. They've already told him, watch yeah, his I fuel mean, gauge. Why didn't he stop when everybody I else did? Go. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay, then we'll keep an eye out for him. Okay, good. Yeah. I want to tell you a story about answer. Doug George, the guy that's driving the 92. He is, Good battle here. He is yeah, well, what with a that broken is, wrist, we can, we can a broken about that if foot, you have that on and two tape. broken ribs, and I can tell you how he's trying to cope. You know, human interest. For eight. ninth and tenth. That's for ninth and tenth. Okay. Well, it's not anymore. Stacy Compton's moving up, too. On who? Got it. Thank you. Lance Norick is in the wall out of turn number three. And what a timely caution this could be for Ron Hornaday who has not pitted yet for fuel neither had Lance I don't believe that he had You're pitted right either no, but he, he didn't want to be the caution he wanted one but he didn't want to be it well that's too bad Lance Norick was running along in sixth place there probably got on the outside there got in the outside wall pretty hard I'll tell you what happened here okay he gets you right there he gets a little bit of a touch there from Dockin. That's docking. Yeah, they just barely touch, but you see he goes around all the way around 360 and then hits the outside wall right there. Now they were racing for position at the time. Now that was for either fifth or sixth place as the field catches up to the caution truck. Fourth caution of the day. And so for those trucks that had not stopped during one of the previous cautions, they will be able to come in now and top off with fuel. That will include, of course, Ron Hornaday, Rob Rizzo, and Boris said. We're under caution here at Nazareth. We'll take a break and be right back. And this is Ralph. Vin, this is Ralph. Sounds like he's gone back to his hauler, so we'll cover the garage area on the 90. Good deal. And Dick is in Hornaday's pit, and he will be pitting. He's coming now. Yes, yeah, he's yes absolutely. Okay. Uh, he's coming in right now. Huge sigh of relief here that he can. Yeah, you bet. know what, though? He's going to have terrible oh, track yeah. position yeah, because sure. Brad oh, and them say they can go. Yeah, but it would have been worse had he gone a few Six more laps because he would have been yeah. out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sixth place. Thank you. Okay. Well, I really the rest of them hadn't made it yet either. Well, that's true, too, but I really <laughs> question that call. He's gone 69 laps there yeah, now, right. and he had a chance to stop when he was after 35 laps. Yeah, 
have the nozzle on that thing correctly, I think. This is helping all those trucks that stopped at 27. Oh yeah. Right now, going around under caution. Yep. I mean, that's that's making them that much better yet. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, this could be lengthy. Would he just stay in there? Yeah, this is going to be a little while. Looks like feature time. Folks. Okay, we'll get to see if he walks in. I can see the uh, hospital. Looks like they took Norick to the hospital. We're going over there. Yeah, he's walking in, but we'll be there when he comes out. Look at the damage to the right side. Mike Joy, buddy? Yes. Yeah. I uh, just want to make sure you know that despite the problems they had in the 16, they did get all the fuel in. Thanks. Next weekend, it's a NASCAR doubleheader from Milwaukee on Saturday. It's the trucks. Last year, Jack Sprague ran down the competition to win the Milwaukee 200. Then next Sunday, the Grand National cars take to the track. In 1996, Buckshot Jones just edged Mike McLaughlin for his first win. A full weekend of live racing next Saturday and Sunday from the Milwaukee Mile here on CBS Sports. Get on the fast track with CBS Sports Line tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Chat online with racing analyst Ned Jarrett. He'll wrap up the Napa Auto Care 200 and look ahead to a big month of NASCAR racing on CBS. That's tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern. CBS.sportsline.com. This is going to be to the garage.com for Lance Norick. He's okay. Walked into the care center. Here's what happened. Got a little touch from Michael Dawkin as they raced for position and into the outside wall. He went hard and he really hit that wall. And we speculated would Ron Hornaday come in. Wasn't much speculation because we knew that he was going to yeah, have to come it was in. Time. And sure enough, he did. You know, it was a good thing it wasn't a green flag stop because he did have some problems getting the fuel into this truck. It took quite a while for him to get it in there. There's the uh, dry brake receptacle going in and then having to be refitted. That Sammy Gonzalez jumped over the wall to help out. And make sure they got all the fuel. And now Hornaday can make it to halftime. We're getting set to go back to green. And you're riding with Ron Hornaday. Pace truck is in. We're back under green. With Sprague the leader, Mike Bliss, Rich Bickle, and Michael Dockin. And Ron Hornaday is in 22nd position. So he's got a tough little chore to try to get back up to the front in these last 28 laps. And Ed, we were talking about track position. You can see two fast trucks right there leading right now. With Jack Sprague leading... Uh, Bliss down the back straightaway. You can see Hornaday back in the traffic right now. He's going to have to work very hard to get back up front. Hornaday pulling down on Brian Reffner. Back up front. Bliss keeps close tabs on Hornaday. Riding with Mike Bliss. Off turn one and into two. And here's Hornaday now battling Morgan Shepard. Yeah, he's already picked up three positions. Here's the problem, though. You see two trucks right in front of him. Where do you go? Outside, inside. They're going to race down the straightaway. Well, there you go. Go between it. them. <laughs> wow. I'll tell you, nice move by Billy Pouch down on the inside to give Hornaday room. He dropped down low, and Hornaday got past Morgan Shepard. You're riding with Morgan as Hornaday has now climbed to 18th position. Mike Stefanik, who leads the points of both the Bush North and the Modified Series, says sometimes those trucks are trying to get through. He calls them landmines. You never know when one of them's going to go off. <laughs> so Hornaday still has to be careful and pick his way through. Here he comes up on Lonnie Rush. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, just a little touch there. Yeah, Lonnie, I am down here. Tickled the primer on that one. It didn't <laughs> go off. But... And here's Kenny Irwin just ahead. 
Well, that is a surprise to see that truck back on the racetrack. You can see the nose of uh, Irwin's truck right there. He's motioning by right now. 42 laps down, Kenny Irwin is, so he's just uh, trying to make up laps. Here's Ralph. Well, Lance Cork has walked out of the infield care center. What happened to you, Lance? I went into turn two, and uh, I think I got hit behind by uh, a blue truck. And, uh, you know, it's too bad. The number 90 NHL truck was really running good, and the guy's been working hard, and uh, I, hate, I hate it for the team to have to be out early. But you're okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Norik had a big uh, Philadelphia Flyers logo on that truck today for the race in Pennsylvania. Halftime break is coming up in about 25 laps. They'll get a chance to bring these trucks in, put new tires on them, and make chassis adjustments without losing their track position. Now, we've had halftime for two and a half seasons here. What do you think of it? Nip? I like it. it uh, of course, it was designed to help to keep costs down in this series. They don't have to take a full pit crew along with them when they go on the road. And most all of these are these truck races are on the road pretty far away. And uh, so I, I think it's good. Eighth place battle here as Rick Corelli gets past Dave Resendez, and so does Joe Rutman. Buddy? Yeah, I think the uh, halftime is great. I think it enhances the uh, competition to a great deal and also gives the truck, it might be just a little bit off, a chance to do things, make it a lot better, keep the competition very, very close for the entire event. That's the reason I like it. You get two chances at your race setup at the top of the day and you get to change it all around for halftime and it's very beneficial to the drivers and teams especially that are seeing these tracks for the first time. You're riding with Jimmy Hensley and now back up front here is Jack Sprague the leader and we're told that all of these trucks can make it to halftime on fuel. All these cautions we've had certainly help that. That shouldn't be a problem. Here's Mike Bliss who started on the pole. He's currently second. And it's a long gap back to Rich Bickle. Third place truck and the point leader. And right on his back bumper, or pretty close to him, is Michael Dawkins in the Dodge number 18. Now Chuck Bowne has lost a couple of truck lengths there to Dawkins. Hanging on in fifth place. Well, when you know you're stopping in 21 laps, if you're not racing for the lead, there's no point in pushing the truck because you know you're going to get the stop. And a lot of people are out there just uh, really riding it out till the halfway. Tony Raines and now Stacy Compton. Stacy moving up through the field in the truck number 86. He's in seventh. Then it's a ways back to the number 43 of Jimmy Hensley, who is in eighth place. And right behind Hensley, Rick Corelli, who's had a good string of finishes these last few races. Third, then a 22nd, and then fourth at Bristol. That's Joe Rutman. You can see him dipping down into the dirt on the inside of the racetrack with the left front of the uh, number 80 truck there. Rutman in 10th place, 11th. Here's Boris Sed driving for Urban Simo Racing. Sed works his way off turn five. And right behind him is Jay Sauter in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet of Richard Childers. And that's David Green there in the 37 truck. 13th place for the Winston Cup regular and former Bush Series champ. Here's a driver we think a lot of, Rick Crawford from Alabama. He is really coming on in the rookie points. His last couple of races include a sixth, a third, and a sixth. Good race car driver, good truck driver also. The next truck we'll see will be Dave Resendez, truck number 35, the yellow one, having a good run. He's in 15th place. And he, yeah, he's carrying Larry the Lizard there. <laughs> is that a live shot of Larry or is that tape? Taking it for a ride here today. <laughs> and right behind him is the 16 truck of Ron Hornaday, who's already moved up to 16th. Remember, he was 22nd on the restart. So Hornaday is mowing them down in an attempt to get back to the front before halftime, which comes along here in just about 17 laps. So Hornaday is 16th. 17th will be Dan Press in that blue and white Spears truck. Just ahead of him is the number 12. And that's uh, Randy McDonald out of Ontario driving for Bob Blake. He's a lap down. Here's Dan Press, 48 years old, Northwest Tour champ, former crew chief for Ron Hornaday out on the West Coast. Press, of course, in 17th position, and right behind him, the 13 truck of Morgan Shepard. They're riding with Shepard down the front straightaway here. As they head down to turn one, you can see Shepard running very well. 
Watch how close he gets to the ripple strips there, right out against the wall. Now you'll see the walk over here. They'll cut right back down on the white line, move out just a little bit, and that sets you up to get back to the bottom part of the racetrack. And now you start towards the back straightaway, right out against the wall, and downhill to turn four. Ned, a big adjustment for a Winston Cup regular like Morgan to hop into a truck and run some laps here? He said, he told me yesterday after he'd had some laps on the track, he said, boy, this is different. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. But Morgan Shepard has driven a lot of different types of race cars. I don't know that he was ever in open wheels other than go-karts, but uh, he's driven just about every form of stock car, and uh, he, he adjusted pretty quickly. Shepard is in 18th position. Like David Green. And Billy Pouch, his first truck series race. Talked to Rusty Wallace about the trucks, and he run here last year. He said it was one of the toughest divisions he'd ever drove in. Lonnie Rush, in the number 77. He's on the lead lap in 19th Whoa. position. And almost collects Morgan Shepard there. Morgan was all sideways getting into turn one. That's Rob Rizzo in the picture as well, the Trans Am racer. That takes you through the top 20. CBS Sports coverage of the Napa Auto Care 200 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. And they can't say we don't go back in the field. Right, nope. That's good. Nice job. Ni no, nice yeah, job. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Sure <laughs> we have a 77. I need some more on Rob. Hey, I just went ahead and run a lap with Morgan there. I hope that was all right. Since, since we were riding with him, yeah. So you guys are all interested in a piece on Billy Pouch. He's kind of a hero and somebody that many in the Winston Cup garage think is the most talented unsigned driver. He's been penalized twice so far today because he just doesn't know the rules here yet. He's <laughs> yeah, he's, he's four laps down, Dick. Well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come up with the human interest stuff. Yep. Uh, the, the story is he's, he's really an incredibly talented local racer. He's making his first start of the series. He's been penalized twice. And this is the truck where they had the turnkey deal that cost a quarter of a million by the time they get done. That is a neat story. Trouble turn four. Whoa, we got one grenade in there. CBS Sports coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is sponsored by Goodyear, number one in tires. Smooth Bush beer and easy drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. And by Econo Lodge. Spend a night, not a fortune, at Econo Lodge. That's the reason why we're under the caution for the fifth time today. Toby Butler something let go and a lot of smoke from that truck going down into turn number four and toby climbs out after a short day it has been six races now since butler's last top 10 finish in this series show you what happened here he was coming down into turn four as you say and you see the smoke let go as he starts into the turn, and then it really looks like he erupts as he gets on into the turn. Ned, he was very, very lucky not to spin. You can see the oil coming out of the exhaust pipes and going right under the tires there. Nice job of holding that truck straight. End of the day for Toby Butler, and we are now seven laps from halftime, but we're going to get an indication of a restart next time by. A lot of racing in the month of July on CBS Sports, and a coming to you starting from Milwaukee next Saturday the truck series and the Grand National cars on Sunday next weekend the Milwaukee 250 then July 12th the Louisville 225 for the truck series three weeks Colorado 250 out at Denver July 19th 
And at the end of the month, we'll have the Grand Nationals in the first ever Gateway 300 at St. Louis. And on Sunday, July 27th, the IRL cars take on Charlotte Motor Speedway for 500 kilometers. Here's Dick Bergren. Well, an interesting story on Billy Pouch. He is a driver that many, many people think is the most talented, unsigned big league driver. He's making his first start at the trucks today, and he's having a tough time with the rules. He missed the driver's meeting this morning, or at least the first half of it, so NASCAR penalized him, put him in the back for that, and then during the running of the race itself, NASCAR had some conversation with him over a yellow flag about where he was supposed to be. Pouch didn't understand it. They brought him in, explained it to him there, so that was the second penalty. He is learning the rules the hard way. But that's not the best story on this team. The best story on this team is that the owner, Dick Greenfield, thought he was going to buy a truck that was complete, ordered one for $45,000, got surprised when he discovered turnkey meant no motor. He's a quarter million dollars into it now. He's now got three motors, two trucks. This is his first race, and he says, and I got Pouch signed. I got him signed. <laughs> Billy Pouch has won on the Syracuse Mile on the dirt, and he's won at Flemington, New Jersey, on dirt and asphalt. He's having a tough baptism to truck racing today off turn four and five and back to the start finish line Jack Sprague and Mike Bliss continue to run Chevy Ford very close together Rich Pickle in third Michael Dawkins having a great run here in fourth and Chuck Bound is up to fifth Tony Raines with the Dodge in sixth, Stacey Compton's Ford in seventh, Jimmy Hensley eighth, Rick Corelli and Joe Rutman your top ten. You can see Rich Bickle there in third. He is running a very, very smart race, Ned. I've watched him the whole race. He hadn't been in a compromise at all. He has been right by himself, as you say, looking at the big picture. That is trying to win the championship this year in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Let's go to the pits and Ralph Shaheen. Well, Andy Santer started on the pole for the Bush North race earlier today, finished fifth, and now you're ready to get in a truck for Brian Cunningham. What's the story? Well, I said Brian's uh, getting a little overheated out there. It's a hot day here in Nazareth, and uh, trucks are real hot inside, they say. So just going to relieve for him, and hopefully we can uh, keep his truck out there and just get some points for him. That was a 100-lap Bush North race, Mike, and he's getting ready to do another 100 laps here. Andy Santer and Mike Stefanik are two fellas racing Bush North that might well ought to be in Bush South and maybe will in the near distant future. A lot of side-by-side -side racing here. Yeah, back in the pack where Ron Hornaday is on the outside there right now, the 31 truck trying to move up through. He's already taken uh, Dave Resendez and Crawford, moved up to 14th place, so Ron Hornaday still picking them off when he can, but he's having to fight for everything he gets with this group of trucks. That's Rick Crawford right behind the Napa Brakes camera in Ron Hornaday's Chevrolet. Hornaday up to 13th, Jay Sauter ahead of him. Three laps from halftime. The halfway sign will come out at lap 100 and the caution the next time by, and Jack Sprague is extending his lead. Well, like I said, if you're not leading, there's no point in pushing it right now. Everybody knows they're going to stop in just a couple of laps, so they're riding it out. Slow roller out of turn five makes a cut down to pit road. That's Lonnie Rush, who started racing in quarter midgets in 1974 and won 162 out of 250 races. Impressive percentage. Wow, it certainly is. What if a baseball player had that kind of batting average? I'd say. He does take that truck to the garage, however. Hornaday has caught Jay Sauter. And we're at halfway. We should see the caution for halftime next time by. And Hornaday's, I thought he'd have a look at Sauter before we got to halftime here. Well, any position he can get will be with that oh. list that he'll have to pass <laughs> when they restart this race. He gives Mr. Sauter a wake-up call there just a little bit right in the tailgate then. And just ahead of them, Boris said got into the back of the truck in front of him, Randy McDonald. Caution wave, spin, turn five. That is said. Oh, stay up there. Oof, and everybody gets by. <laughs> The teams here use two spotters, one up in that turn five grandstand and another up in the grandstand outside of turn two. Here's what? a little fire coming out from underneath that truck. Ned, with the nine to one compression motor, you get a lot of fuel down in the exhaust and when he spun there, it run down the pipes and that's what you see. It wasn't a real fire of any kind. So once he fired it up, it put the fire out, he drives away. Well, that's an exciting end of the first half. Yeah. 
with Jack Sprague the leader Mike Bliss in second Rich Bickle in third Michael Dockin in fourth fifth Chuck Bound sixth Tony Rain seventh Stacy Compton and Jimmy Hensley Rick Corelli and Joe Rutten the top 10 Jay Sauter moved up to 11th on that 101st lap and Ron Hornaday has climbed to 12. So the pace car will lead everyone down pit road. When the last truck stops in its pit stall, they'll have five minutes to make adjustments and repairs. And we'll be back to cover halftime here at the Nazareth Mile right after this word. Mm -hmm. You doing okay? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Yes. Uh, how about Hornaday? Boy, I tell you what, <clears throat> that shows you what track position means. Uh, yeah. He could have been in two wrecks. Hornaday could have right. found not right. it. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to go back to. We can go cover the, the change of driver with Cunningham. I think that's mm. probably the next best thing. Hey, this, Ralph. Then we'll work our way farther up. Ralph, you know who's had a great race so far is Dockin. He's he's yeah. in fourth place. He's been quite All right, a well, then I'm going to have to do this one and then drop out of here and then work my way up to it because it'd be too far to run to. Yes, sir. All right. I'm, I'm going to do Bliss then and then throw it, throw it back to Dick, and then I'll run up to do Dockin and Reigns. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, did he have help? I think Boris might have. What would Boris say? And there comes the unburned fuel. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is there a card for the summary? Is there a card? No, okay. Thank you. Do I call it the Mobile One Race Summary? Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'm not used to having this. <laughs> this CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Mobile One 100% Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. We're at halftime in Nazareth, Pennsylvania after the 101 laps. Three leaders in this race. Three lead changes. Average speed 98 and a half miles an hour. Slowed by six caution periods for 22 laps. Off the track in the garage area. Toby Butler, Lance Norwick, Norick, and Bob Keselowski. There are the reasons why. Now, just as we came around to take the caution for halftime, what would Boris have said about this, buddy? Well, you see him going down there. He just gets the back end out on the truck, and around goes Boris said, No help whatsoever. Did all that by himself. And nice job, especially by Rob Risso there, to miss him on the inside. So pit stops are underway. Here's Ralph Shaheen. Mike Bliss pitted. He is the second place car truck right now. And Mike, what are you going to do to this machine? We're going to uh, try to make it turn a little bit better. It's not turning real good off the corners. We're going to try to tune the motor up a little bit. We can't run with that 24 down straight away. He's just pulling us down straight away. But oh, no, we're going to work on it. The, uh, the guys are doing a heck of a job so far. And uh, we'll just see what happens after this. How about your pit strategy with this next stop? We're going to try to, you know, probably pit early as soon as the yellow comes out after 25 and then come on in and get fuel. Dick Bergren. Well, this is the guy they call Mile Track Jack. He's led some 700 laps this year, 95% of them on miles. He took two of these bags of ice in his chest. They moved the fenders out. They adjusted the shock of the back of this thing. What are they trying to do, Jack? Well, I'll tell you what. These guys have done a great job on a Square State Shell. It's a brand new truck. Uh, I'm just a little bit loose in and a little bit loose off, but... Uh, all in all, it's, it's running really well, and just trying to keep ourselves cool and stay out of trouble and try to win this thing for Quaker State and Hendrick Motorsports. 
Well, he's running good so far. Let's go up and try to catch Ron Hornaday. They're putting up the window net in his truck, but let's see if we can quick get a word in with him. Ron, how's the truck? Uh, we're not going to change the truck. Uh, we just thought they were going to run out of fuel. We just waited too long to get some fuel, and uh, not for Chevrolet's all right. We just lost some track position. How will that fuel deal affect you in the second half? Uh, we'll find out. Maybe we get to stop early. We'll know what it does. <laughs> Jarrell Shaheen. Michael Dawkin is fourth. Michael, what changes did you make? Uh, just try to loosen up a little bit. It was a little bit tight. N nothing major. Uh, it felt pretty good in the first half, so we'll just go out there and see what we can do at the end. Oh, now, Michael's teammate is Tony Raines. He is in the 19 truck. He is pitted just up in front of him. We'll see if we can slide the microphone in here and get a word if they'll open the window net for us real quick. Pop this up just like this. Tony, what are you going to do to this truck? Anything? Well, we're just a little bit tight. We loosened up a little bit, and uh, we're going to go back out there and see what we can do with it. All right, we'll get the window net for you. Dick Bergeron? It's Joe Rutman's truck has got a damaged left side. Joe, how badly bent is it? Uh, Dick, we're, we're a little bit tight in the first half. We'll see if we can't loosen her up a little bit. That's uh, what our problem's been, so we'll give her a go to the second half. That's Joe Rutman. He's going to start in his 10th spot. Ralph? Well, they've refired engines that are getting set to come back out after the halftime break, and we'll be back for the Nazareth Mile to enjoy the second half here of the Craftsman Truck Series right after this word. Back across now. Okay, James, back across. Thank you guys for your hustle. Dick will have more. Dick's got resendance, and he's not ready to go. He may miss the green. Myself around here just a little bit, although I don't look like everybody <laughs> may remark. Okay, we got a story for you on the start. Uh, Ned, but it's a you did good, illustrator. Have you seen any surprises? Did anything surprise you about this first half? Or yeah. should we talk about strategy yeah. for the second half? day. Why he didn't stop. Well, that, that was what would you like to talk about? Uh, uh, well, yeah, you can ask that question, and I'll say that. Well, we certainly had a lot of action, but that was expected. You guys have a broken shot? He didn't, he didn't think much of the back position. Buddy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 They knew, but Hornaday's guys knew before they came into this race today that they were going to get lousy this fuel mileage. Right Remember, that's the Hunter motor in it. That's a change, to something that they're just starting. Uh, and they did a mileage check, and they knew they were in trouble. I mean, they're okay. getting like 2.8, 2.9. That's all. What are they trying to cool down, Resendez's truck? No, Resendez has got a hole in his radiator. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Larry? Thanks. Larry have anything to do with it? Stick the lizard in it. <laughs> Stick Larry in the hole. Are we coming back with this? Okay. Where to break? Okay. One to go. One to go. Don't miss the green. Only one truck still remains on pit road. Dave Resendez with a radiator problem. They're trying to fix a leaky radiator. Everybody else is out and running. If he doesn't get this thing going in a hurry, he's going to miss the restart. Mike? Thanks, Dick. Well, Ned, buddy, strategy for this second half. What do you expect different, Ned? Well, I, I don't think it'll be a lot different except in Ron Hornaday. I yes. think that he'll come in earlier this time and not give us that track position. All of them will have to stop for fuel. Buddy Jack Sprague has a lot of engine. He's proven that. He's got a great engine, but everybody's had a chance to work on these trucks. Let's get back to racing and see who has the muscle now. All right, green flag coming out here with 101 laps completed. They'll begin scoring again this time by. They line up just the way they were running at halftime, and Sprague leads Mike Bliss in the rest of this field. contact down there in turn two. Jay Sauter involved, but everyone breaks free. Yeah, uh, Ron Hornaday got on the inside of him, and uh, I think he made the pass. As you see, they're still too wide back through the field. There's Hornaday going out of frame down there in turn three. 
and the lead battle. Mike Bliss, let's see if that truck is indeed better than it was in the first half. Bliss was complaining the front of the truck wouldn't stay on the bottom of the racetrack. We did watch Jack Sprague able to stay very low. Trouble, turn one. A hard hit for Rob Rizzo. Rizzo and the 31 of Tony Roper got together going into turn number one. Look at what is left of the left side of Rizzo's truck. Remember, he hurt his shoulder badly back at Homestead, spent several races in the truck but recuperating. And the right side, he's taken a hard hit. Both those trucks have taken a hard hit. A lot of damage. Six yellow comes out at lap 103. And you see Rizzo moving around in the truck. Yeah, Rizzo was moving around. Uh, Roper had some damage before this wreck and was just nursing that car, uh, truck around the racetrack and apparently got collected into this. Tony Roper slapped the wall hard as well. As the safety workers are getting in there with Tony. Mike, you can see the left rear corner really caved in there. It looks like uh, there was heavy contact to the left side of Roper's truck. Buddy, it was just a case of, of two drivers trying to get to the bottom in turn one at the same time. And there is Rob Rizzo. He is okay. That's good news. Not even favoring that shoulder, and that's good to see. Taking the windshield out of Tony Roper's truck. We are, of course, under caution. This is the sixth one of the day. I'll make that seventh caution. There's Rob Rizzo. Walking to the ambulance for the trip to the care center. And the medical crews still assisting Tony Roper. This happened well back in the pack. Uh, back, I believe, at about 18th position. The scoring has since been updated, but that's where those two drivers were racing. Both on the lead lap. There's still 21 trucks even after this being shown on the lead lap. I'm corrected, then. Rizzo was on the lead lap. Uh, he had been up with the leaders a good part of the day. Roper was three laps down at the time. And there they assist him out of the truck and onto the stretcher. A very hard hit at the exit of turn number one. Mike, you see them doing all the work they're doing there on the stretcher. A lot of times they put a neck brace and all just because the driver may say, hey, my neck's real sore or my ribs are real sore. They don't want to just move them around. They want to get them on there, get them stationary, and then let the doctor tell them whether he's okay or not. And the complexity of the safety roll cage makes climbing in and out of one of those trucks, if you're injured in any way, rather difficult. That, plus the wraparound seats, uh, the shoulder and side headrests. There, Tony's moving around, so hopefully he's okay. You can we'll, see him moving his arms. All right. We'll update you when we get further word. Here's Ralph. Mike, I just had an opportunity to talk to Tony Roper's crew chief, Jim Daly, who says that Tony has crawled out of the truck on his own power, and he is going to take a ride to the infield care center. They're going to just have him stabilized there as they put him into the ambulance. Roper seventh in rookie points. Had a lot of wins in IMCA modified and late models on the asphalt tracks. Finished tenth last year on the ASA circuit in the point standings. But you see that he is conscious, talking to the medical personnel and uh, taking the ride to the care center. Let's show you what happened here. Rizzo is the blue and yellow truck. The green truck is Roper. See Rizzo, they're going under Roper. As they start down, they make contact right there. You see the 31 of Roper going into the wall. Rizzo is just about to tip over there as they hit the wall very hard. The trucks got hooked there and they couldn't get apart. Let's show you what Morgan Shepard saw. That's Rizzo on the far left, just ahead of Shepard. That's Rizzo right there. You see he gets into the 31 truck, and then they get hooked together as he gets up on the left uh, part of the hood, and they couldn't get apart until they hit the wall. 
Now let's show you its speed. They hit the wall hard and then he hit each other hard after they hit the wall. I tell you, Rizzo was very, very lucky there to hit on that truck when, or he would have went head on into the wall there. We'll update you in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the Napa Auto Care 200 continues after this message and a word from your local station. Was fine. It, that yeah. thing was torn up pretty bad. But yeah. What I'm guessing is Rizzo, knowing that's a lap truck because he passed mm -hmm. him two or three times already, might have figured he could get there before the corner. Mm -hmm. One to go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. We're one lap to racing. Okay. Choo choos. You had candy. You had candy. <laughs> What's that? Look at this. Uh, for who? Okay. Thank you. Seven. Can I see the leaderboard quick? Uh, hope I know the name. <laughs> Damron? Yep. Is that Damron? Yep. Okay. Deadly hard. Thank you. <coughs> One to go now. Tonight on CBS, Jerry Seinfeld didn't get rich working for nothing. So guess what he's getting to show up on 60 Minutes tonight? That's followed by Touched by an Angel and then the CBS Sunday movie, Children of the Dark, with Peter Horton and Tracy Pollan. That's all tonight on CBS. Next, the PGA Tour on CBS Sports continues. Live final round coverage of the FedEx St. Jude Classic from Memphis. They concluded the third round earlier today. Final round coming up next, Robert Dameron at 15 under, leading Dudley Hart and Justin Leonard. We're getting set for a restart. Here's Dick. Interesting strategy by Ron Hornaday. You'll recall in the first half of this race, he waited long to take fuel. Their initial calculation, he could only go 61 laps. They have done a recalculation based on what he used in the first half, and he could have made it when everybody else did on that first round. So watch Hornaday come in when everybody else comes in this second time around. He's still got a shot to win this thing. Mike? Left foot on the brake. You see Hornaday ready to make that shift. Coming up to speed. Never touched the clutch. He's up to speed, and we're back to green. Well, I tell you, he started off in second gear. He went up to third, but he didn't stay there but just a second. And right back into high gear, you could see there was no missed motion there. He was on his way. Looks like those gears are spaced very close together. Hornaday shifting uh, that type of transmission. Gordy Arbiter built it for him. Trouble, oh. turn four. That's, That's Jimmy Hensley. Hensley. And Rick Crawford. Rick Crawford almost got stopped. He just barely bumped into the side of Hensley's truck. Well, the caution hasn't come out yet. They're going to see if those trucks can move away. They are moving away. No caution. Boy, they lost a lot of time, a lot of track position. Tough break for Crawford. He was the victim. Here's Jimmy Hensley in the Cummins Dodge. Two leaders have broken away. Front five. Kind of have free reign, but from Chuck Bowen on back, it is very busy here at Nazareth. There's your two leaders, Sprague and Bliss. And look at this pack working its way past Tammy Joe Kirk. There's Hornaday, number 16, right in the middle of it, behind Rick Corelli's number six. 
That's what losing track position, even the, in the first half there, making that late stop. You see, he's still having to deal with a lot of lap traffic. On a day in the goal 16, there's Joe Rutman in the 80 truck that just went there. He comes back into the picture. He's running right behind Hornaday. Hornaday running now in the ninth position. Rutman is 10. Let's show you what happened to Jimmy Hensley. He was under Corelli there and got touched just in the back there. Uh, I think that was Bickle. And you see the 14 of Crawford getting into him very easily, but Hensley is in the pits as we speak. No caution flag. Okay, here's from Jimmy's view. A lot of heavy traffic. Either he and Corelli got together or <laughs> he and Joe Rutman got together. Dick Bergren. Motion that he's going to go half to behind the wall. Hensley in trouble here on Pitt Road. Much more than a flat left front tire. Water pouring out of the engine. The crew has got a lot of work to do to get that truck back out on the racetrack. Mike. Last year's runner up here, and you see Rick Crawford got more than cosmetic damage on his number 14 Ford. Top rookie finisher in two of the last three races. He will come to Pitt Road. It looks like that left front tire maybe has been cut down by the sheet metal that was knocked in on it. Here comes Hornaday looking for some way around uh, Stacy Compton there. You see him getting under the 12 truck there as they head down for the front straightaway. Of course, that 12 truck is laps down, but Hornaday now up to seventh place. He's made a remarkable run up through the field. Just making his pit stop in the first segment. Working on sixth place. Truck being driven by Stacy Compton. Check with uh, Ralph Shaheen with Rob Rizzo. Rob, what happened out there? And are you okay? Um, I guess going into turn one, I was down on the inside, and I thought that the uh, 31 truck was going to get out of it. It was, it was a lap truck. Uh, it's, it's really an unfortunate thing that had to happen. Uh, we were running really well at the beginning of the race. You know, I was in fourth spot. I mean, the truck, we made some changes at the halfway point, and we were really excited about the second half of the race. You know, it's just unfortunate when you come up on the lap car truck. And I probably should have got out of the way, but I thought he was going to give me a little room, but you know, that's not what happened, so it's too bad that had to happen. Tough break for Rob Rizzo. Hornaday chasing Stacy Compton, and Compton's having a strong run here today. Seven seconds behind the leader. You know, you're riding with Ron Hornaday as he starts down the back straightaway, and just behind him is Joe Rutman. These guys have been going at it pretty well. We've been talking about Hornaday, but Rutman's going right along. You see him right here in the, in the LCI truck. He is really going through the corners quite well and keeping up with Ron Hornaday. Ned, I'm impressed by Stacy Compton's run today. Yes, he's had a good run. He's, uh, and here's the battle for the lead, it looks like. Mike Bliss has moved up on Jack Sprague. Oh, you can see Sprague's truck very, very nervous in the back there as Bliss makes a move on the inside. That's what you call it, nervous when they start wiggling. Yeah, it makes yeah. the driver nervous and the truck's <laughs> already nervous. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So Mike Bliss leads for the second time today. Now it's Jack Sprague's turn to put the pressure on. 81 laps to go here in Nazareth. First of four weekends of truck series racing here on CBS. And they better not look back too far. Every once in a while, you see that 17 truck come into the picture back there. That's Rich Bickle, the point leader. We'll see him again here in a second as we watch this battle for the lead. But Bickle is not too far behind them. That's Greg. Oh, baby, that's very close there. As you see him going through the off camber turn there in turn three as they head down the back straightaway. It looks like Bliss, when he's out front, maybe picks up a little bit of push just as he starts off the corner. And Sprague keeping that pressure on him to try to make that back end loose on that truck. But uh, so far, Bliss is able to stay out there as they come around one of the lap trucks. Bliss had a second at Miami, the former USAC Silver Crown, a midget champion. Fifth at Texas two races ago. 
and had a heartbreaking 30th last week at Bristol under the lights in Tennessee. Of the nine mile track races, Jack Sprague has won six of them, including five of the last six. Think a truck don't move down the straightaway. Watch them when they come by here. This is a speed shot that lets you know they are all in the mail when they come by here. Well, Bliss is putting a little distance on Jack Sprague. Yeah, this is very unusual for Jack. It has, but you see, he keeps moving right back in the contention there. I think Jack Sprague's got a little truck left yet. We'll see. Here's Dick Bergeron. Remember before the break, Jack Sprague was complaining that his truck was a little bit loose, so they did some work on it to try and tighten it up, make it go through the corners a little bit better. Well, guess what? They tightened it up just a tad too much, and he is pushing, understeering. He turns the wheels to the left. Chuck wants to go straight ahead. That's Sprague's problem right now. I wish that the guys in the pits could see what we're seeing up here on the replays. Jack Sprague had the wheels cut all the way to the right a while ago, and the back of the truck was trying to get around on him. Pushy loose, maybe? <laughs> I've heard that expression, well, folks. Yeah, you, you can get in that position. If, you if really a truck, can. Yeah, if a truck is, is pushing, the, the front end won't turn when you turn the steering wheel, and then all of a sudden you're turning it, you might jerk it just a little bit, and that'll break the back end loose. And the other thing, Ned, is when you're really drafting like he is right now, the second car acts, or truck picks up a little bit of a, a dead push also, mm -hmm. so that's playing into his hands if he had a problem. In this group, Stacy Compton, Sitting in sixth, that number 86, left side of your screen. Started racing in go-karts when he was six years old. He's about to have company with Ron Hornaday and Joe Rutman right there. Compton moved up to late models in his native Virginia at the age of 16. Last year ran his very first Winston Cup race at Martinsville, Virginia, and started in ninth position. Young fellow's got quite a future ahead of him. 30 years old, Stacy hey, Compton. He impressed a lot of people with that qualifying run at Martinsville last year, including me. Have a look at Boris said as he works his way around. Gave a signal there to the driver behind and Mike Bliss. He's got a Sprague. problem. He's up out of the groove right now. Well, we're watching his feet, but he has moved up on the high side of the racetrack right now. He motioned the leaders by. He's a lap down now. You see him pumping the brake right now with his left foot. That's the accelerator. You see him coming down with the right foot there. That's actually the that uh, big piece of metal there on the top is part of the accelerator system. So Boris set now a lap down, working his way around the outside of the racetrack. Ron Hornaday has climbed this ladder to seventh, but no further. Stacy Compton just ahead, and now Joe Rutman has moved in just behind. Speaking of Joe Rutman on the left door, he has some damage there that he didn't have just a little while ago. Somebody's gotten into the left side of the uh, truck of Joe Rutman's and has a little bit of damage there just behind the left front wheel. That's Rutman's number 80 in black, red, and yellow. Well, Ron Hornaday knew when he went that long before he made a pit stop in the first half of the race that track position was going to be tough, and he knew once he got up in the top 10, those trucks would be tougher to pass. Tony Roper had that hard hit into the wall. He was uh, helped out of the truck by the ambulance crew. And Ralph Shaheen, what's the up latest on Roper? Well, I've got his father, Dean, who is a famous racer in his own right. How is Tony? Well, I think he's all right. He's got some soreness between his shoulder blades, so they're going to take him in and check him. But other than that, I think he's going to be all right. It's just kind of precautionary check. Mike? A lot of folks drive hurt in this series. We have talked about Rob Rizzo, who nursed that shoulder after the Homestead injury. And another of those is Doug George, who's out there today in the number 92 truck. George, former Winston West champion, has a banged up wrist, a banged up foot, and two broken ribs. But there is Doug, and he is holding his own in this race. He is two laps down presently in 20th position, but refused to stay home. Boy, that's a lot of guts when you get out there and know you're hurt. And with a, look at it, look at this foot. I mean, they made that. That's the money foot too. That's the right side that he has a problem with. That's the accelerator foot. Have you often had a drive hurt? Oh yeah, yeah. Every race car driver runs sometimes with some injury. Believe me. Uh, Dale Jarrett last year raced with broken ribs. Uh, Dale broken Earnhardt foot. with a broken sternum. Uh, collarbone. I mean, yeah, this is part of the, the deal. If you're up there, you don't mind racing. 
So Mike Bliss now leads Jack Sprague by seven tenths of a second, and Sprague's way up the racetrack and drifts back a bit. We'll be right back. Yeah, it worked good. I thought it worked good. I don't know what else I could do. <laughs> Coach is getting a marvelous shot. That's okay. <laughs> you, you picked it hey, up Mike, well. Mike Sorry. and Buddy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's Dick. That deal with uh, Sprague pushing, that came from the crew chief. That wasn't my guess. That's that's what uh, Dennis Connor said it's doing. Yeah, we're watching him up here, though. I, I wish I could have some kind of button to push and let you know. He was turning right in the center of the corner, but that could be pushing going in and then the back breaking loose to get off. Yeah, it could well be. But yeah. that's what all he's complaining about is the push. But you know, Sprague, that's what he always complains about. Right. If he's got to push for four feet in the racetrack, that's what you'll hear about. He can be loose the whole rest of the way around. That's fine. He doesn't like uh -oh. that push. Leaders. Leaders, lead change. No, never mind. No, that was uh, Urban. Never mind. Gentlemen, just talked to uh, Barry Dotson. He said uh, Bliss is just fine, just where he wants him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mike Bliss and them, they made the right changes, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Sprague come so close to hitting the wall just now, it wasn't even close. I mean, woo. Caution. Caution. Debris. Debris. Jock debris. We know where, yeah. Back straight. Mike and Buddy, can you hear me? Yes, Dick. Dick. Yes. Okay, Dennis Conner just confirmed again. Push on the 24. They're going to adjust it on this stop. Okay. Now, um, Eric, I'd like to get that update from Dick because he can talk about what the driver tells the crew chief as opposed to what we see. It's sometimes yeah. a little different. And they're all going to pit right now. One hundred thirty six laps complete debris on the back stretch has brought out the eighth caution of the day and perhaps everyone may pit Dick Bergeron. Well, they're all going to come in now and make their pit stops on lap 136. Jack Sprague said to his crew that the truck is tight. That's his typical complaint. If the truck is tight two feet around the racetrack, that's what you'll hear about. <laughs> if it's loose all the way, arrest or way around, you won't hear about that. He does like a loose vehicle, and they are all going to come rolling down pit road right now, including Hornaday, for minor adjustments and fuel. And this is going to be one quick pit stop, you can be assured, for everybody who is here. The adjustments on the back of the 24 truck. Hornaday is in, in front of him. Blitz is gone. 24 is gone. Hornaday still in. Chuck Bound is going to be in El Sol's dock, and there goes Hornaday finally. Hornaday is behind him and Jay Sauter. And Rich Bickle got out of the pits first. Again, just like on the uh, first gas stop. And we saw a lot of those ratchets and long extensions out there that time. This is an opportunity for him to make those adjustments. Well, the fans at Nazareth got a special treat today as NASCAR experimented with their pre-race routine. Before each race, NASCAR holds a mandatory driver's meeting, usually in closed session in the garage area. Today, for the first time, the fans were invited. The meeting moved outside the grandstand. Everybody invited. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome everybody to Nazareth Speedway. And also, on behalf of NASCAR Crestman Truck Series, I want to welcome all the great fans of the northeast section of the United States being with us today. Single file restart until lapping has begun. Double file after that. Lead lap trucks on the outside, lap trucks on the inside. After the meeting, some of the drivers accommodated the fans with autographs. I really do enjoy being here and seeing them all. They all look so human. Most of them were yawning, though. They're tired. <laughs> they got a long day to go. I think this is a neat deal where uh, they can uh, be involved more and uh, see what's happening. Well, I thought it was pretty pretty nice to the organization to have it. I never experienced anything like uh, 
you know, being as close to the drivers like this, and uh, it's a good show. I think they should have more of it. Getting set for the restart, Ralph Shaheen. Well, Mike, after we got this race started, after the halfway break, Rich Bickle smelled smoke. He really thought he was in trouble. The problem was it was so hot inside the cab of his truck, his plastic water bottle started to melt. Rich Bickle came in, just took fuel. He'll be all right. So did Mike Bliss. You know, Mike, I talked to a bunch of the truck drivers before the race here today, and they said the one thing that the 9 to 1 compression motor did, it has a lot of fuel down in the header pipes and down the pipes, and when it burns through as they back off, it creates a tremendous amount of heat on the heels and also on the back part of the uh, seat. So these guys are experiencing 135 degrees of heat right now inside the uh, cab of these trucks. It's a warm day out there. You see we have a new leader, Joe Rutman, in the number 84. He did not make a pit stop. So Rutman inherits the race lead. It's Rutman, Bickle, Bliss, and Spray. We'll be right back to Nazareth. Yes. I can never tell. We're away. When we're away. Okay. CBS Sports coverage. I felt that since you had led to me, I needed to just say something Thank quick you. there a moment yes, ago. Yes. That. Uh, thanks. And that. Mm, well. One to go. Pit stops are not a problem now. Except for Rutman. <laughs> for Rutman. <coughs> Who? He didn't stop. I don't understand that. He didn't pit. I don't understand that. Okay. He must know something we don't know. Let's leave Maybe that up. Away. Let's leave that up for now. I'll give you a number. If he okay. does, we'll get to see that whole truck right out there on the grass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> what they said. Mm, look at the sun. What other reason would he not have stopped? Cool, <laughs> clear water. You have to stop. <coughs> uh, you know, 60 left to go. Leading doesn't pay anything. Mm -hmm. Energy, energy. <laughs> CBS Sports coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. They've just waved the green for the restart, and Jack Sprague is the man on the move. Rutman is the leader. Bliss is second, and the fight is right behind them as Sprague takes over the spot from Rich Bickle. That's third. Bickle lost two positions on that lap, Mike. He was in second place on the restart. Now he's fourth. You know, Ned, a lot of times when you don't clean the tires properly, you lose a lot of traction, and it takes a full lap to get all the debris off the tires, and that might have been what happened to the uh, 17 truck of Bickle then. Bliss down to the inside on the Terry Cook number 88. Cook is two laps down. And Sprague has a look on the low side. Cook gives him plenty of room. Here comes Bickle. Then Michael Dockin, who's in fifth place after pit stops. Sixth is Chuck Bound. Seventh, Stacy Compton. Eighth is Tony Raines. Ninth is Ron Hornaday. And tenth, Jay Sauter. Ned, I've got a real question to ask you. Why did Rutman not stop then when all the leaders did? The only thing I can think of, does he think he can go all the way? Well, let's Here. go to Dick Berger. Maybe we can find out. Well, Randy Goss is going to tell us as soon as he finishes talking to his driver who just passed by. Randy, you're the crew chief for Joe Rutman. You guys trying to make it all the way on this deal? I couldn't hear a word you're saying, but we're going for it. Uh, if our fuel numbers are right, we'll make it. If they're not, we're going to be crying in our beers tonight. But uh, 
I think we picked up a little bit at the half there. We changed the chassis a little bit, and uh, I, I, we're going for it. We're going for the championship. Well, this will be interesting. Nobody has gone that 100 miles so far. Ralph? Dick, Rich Bickle took the blame himself for losing those two spots on the restart. He said driver was asleep at the start. Gentlemen, I apologize. Bickle's the kind of guy he'll get him back. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's run a very consistent race today and losing a couple of spots that don't take him out of anything. He just lost some track position there. So now it's Ford, Ford, Chevy, Chevy. With Rutman leading Bliss in Fords, Sprague and Bickle in Chevrolets, then the Dodge of Michael Dockin. So all three makes in the top five. Boy, I tell you what, Bliss and, and Sprague right now are flying around this racetrack. I do not believe that Joe Rutman's going to be able to hold them off. They're closed in some 10 truck lengths this last uh, lap around the racetrack. You can see Bliss now visibly closing in on Joe Rutman as they head into turn four. And Sprague has caught Bliss. Ned, it seems turn four is the one part of this racetrack that going in there, Jack Sprague gets such a long pull down the straightaway that he eats up a couple of truck lengths each lap going down that straightaway and into four. Well, the horsepower that he has under the hood of that truck helps a whole lot to do that, especially when he's coming off, accelerating off the turns, and if the truck is getting traction, which it is right now. Now, here he comes off turn number two. Watch how that gap shrinks when they get to the end of the straightaway. Mike, that's what I'm talking about. It's down to five truck length now as they head down towards the front straightaway you can see coming along with him there Jack Sprague in that green truck is coming right along with Bliss. There's how the interval has closed up on these last five laps to now just six tenths of a second and now 45 one hundredths of a second last time by. That one you can measure in just truck length. Out the front of Mike Bliss looking at leader Joe Rutman. It's a truck length and a half. And Sprague is there. And you're, and you're looking at Rutman's truck. I don't see it doing anything wrong except getting outrun right now. You can see Bliss closing in down to three trucks. Trouble left now. out of turn three. A big crash. Two trucks involved. Here come the leaders up on it. One of them is Randy McDonald from Ontario. And there's a second truck. There it is. Boris said. Put us under caution for the ninth time. Well, Boris has had a had a tough situation here today. He has uh, managed to stay on the lead lap, but this is what the third time that he's, I said he stayed on the lead lap. He's being shown now a couple of laps down, but uh, third time he's been involved in an accident or a spin. Now that number 12 truck, it has Bob Blake's number on it, but it's Randy McDonald's truck. It was a swap they worked to try to keep Blake up in the points. Doug George destroyed their truck last week at Bristol, Tennessee, and he's in a truck with 92 on it today. You need a program. You know, yeah. Mike, something else. They do not race back to the green flag or the caution flag. When the caution comes out, if they're over in turn two and the caution lights come on, they back off. They do not race back. And you could see that's a real payoff when they come up on wrecks on the back straightaway. They're not racing back to the flag. Randy McDonald from Ontario, Canada, has had a couple of forays into NASCAR racing in the Winston Cup Series and now in the Truck Series. Let's see what happened between McDonald in the black truck and the white truck of Boris said. Well, here they are as they come off the turn. Here's the 12th truck of McDonald and wow. Boris said, of course, in the 44 truck, and they make contact, and around they go. McDonald backs into the wall hard. Said's truck continues to spin on down to the inside of the track. Wow, Billy Pouch just squeezed right through there. And from our CBS wipe the camera off the wall shot. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. He's not going to make it. Well, everybody got through there pretty well except the two trucks that were involved, and thank goodness for that. Things happen in a hurry, and it sure doesn't take much. Nice to be an announcer, too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boris said is on pit road for repairs. Dick Bergren, 
It doesn't look all that bad from here, Mike. They're working on the right front fender of this truck, trying to pull it back. There's damage on both sides from contact Sid has had today. Jay Smith, the crew chief, is out there, one of two men working on the front of it. Ironically enough, McDonald's pit is right next door, and there was a very unpleasant conversation between these two crews as to who was at fault. Equally interesting, neither one of them has a television monitor, so they couldn't see, but they knew darn well their guy was not at fault. Well, oh. look where the official is standing, holding Boris Sed. He's in, is he in the penalty box? It appears as if he's in the penalty box. Mike, a moment ago, I said he was two laps down. He had not come around yet to take the caution, even though he kept going. So he's really only one lap down, but now he's about to go two laps down. Well, Boris Sed will get a little cool off there on pit road as the field goes by, puts him another lap down, and will return to Nazareth after this word. We don't know how many laps this penalty is. I asked Gail, and uh, they didn't say. They did not say. Said, oh, Mike? Not. Yes, Dick? Uh, I just talked to Jay Smith. He said, I guess it was rough driving or something. <laughs> uh, I, tried, I tried to monitor NASCAR. I could not pick it up. No. Um, if it's rough driving, they won't. No, no. <laughs> if he been. would make one inch of move toward the uh, official there, that would be it. Yep could find something else to do this year. All right, Mike McLaughlin. Got it, thank you. Oh, okay. All I have is the winner. Or do you have it? All right, they're letting him go this time. Tail end of the longest line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Truck promo first, right? Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll follow I'll follow you. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Goodyear. Number one in time. 46 laps to go. Joe Rutman is the fourth leader of the day. There have been five lead changes. The nine caution flags for 39 laps brought the average speed down to 85 miles an hour. Eight trucks in the garage area. With this race at three quarters distance, Crash taking out Keselowski, Norick, Roper, Rizzo, and McDonald. Butler and Rush, engine trouble and mechanical problems on Morgan Shepard's truck. Start next time by. CBS Sports keeps trucking the next three weekends. Next Saturday, it's the Milwaukee 200. In two weeks, the Louisville 225. And then on July 19th, the Colorado 250. See live flag to flag coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series right here on CBS. Joe, I mean. Getting set for a restart here this time by. Boris Set has been released from the penalty box and told to go to the end of the longest line. Not a happy camper, I can guarantee you. He was held in the pits for two laps, and NASCAR says they'll explain that penalty after the race. Okay. So Joe Rutman, who's finished 17 times in the top 10 in 200 Winston Cup starts, is set to go. From the front, we'll see if he has enough gas to go the distance. Welcome to Nazareth, folks. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ned Jarrett. Nick Berger and Ralph Shaheen on pit road.
Mike Bliss, Jack Sprague have led a lot of this race, but now Joe Rutman is trying to go the whole second half without a fuel stop. He's in the good place to do it first. Let's see if that strategy pays off. We've had nine caution flags, the most serious incident. Rob Rizzo and Tony Roper hard into the turn one wall. But everyone involved in each of those incidents throughout the day is okay. You see there's still 16 trucks on the lead lap. Rutman has a lead of about two truck lengths as they head downhill to turn four. You know, Mike Bliss, it takes him about two to three laps to really get that truck churning well. You see Jack Sprague in the green, number 24 there, running third. He seems to be real quick, but uh, I think Bliss may have the fastest truck out there, even though Joe Rutman is in the lead at the moment. Rutman driving for Jack Roush. Roush has been known, they've been known to gamble on things like fuel mileage in the past. One races that way and lost him as well. Michigan with Mark Martin comes to mind. You're watching from Mike Bliss back at Jack Sprague. The Jack Sprague just under the tailgate of the truck as they're coming through the corner there. I did notice Mike Bliss's truck a little nervous coming off the turn three just a second ago. And this don't help when, when a truck gets that close to the back of the truck. It's almost like the air is trying to pick it up. Here comes Sprague. Jack Sprague alongside. Perhaps a tiny bit of contact, and Sprague moves up, takes the second spot away. Make it Ford, Chevy, Ford. Rutman, Sprague, and Bliss. Then Rich Bickle in a Chevy, and Michael Dawkins, Dodge. You know, they ran, ran Joe Rutman down just before they had this little stop there just a while ago. And now look at uh, Rutman. He seems to have the truck to beat. Well, certainly that... Uh portion of a lap they ran side by side allowed him to pull away a little bit but uh, he's certainly good on restarts. Ron Hornaday has moved up to seventh. Stacy Compton to eighth. And sixth is Chuck Bow behind Dockett in fifth. Mitchell Michael Dockin running in fifth place having a great race. We've talked about that a little bit here today. Just last week he and his wife bought their first home in Greensboro, North Carolina. Since they've been married, they've been living in apartments in Florida and North Carolina, and now they have a home of their own. Well, that's a big deal. I, I can relate to that. Here he yeah, comes I behind Rich too. Bickle. No more blowouts in the living room, huh? <laughs> <laughs> mm, that wasn't nice. Here we go. Look what, I mean, Jack Sprague has opened up about a 15-truck length lead over Mike Bliss, and just before they had that little extended caution there, they were moving away on it. Things seem to have stabilized for the moment on this restart. Fourth, fifth, and sixth, though, are getting kind of close together. Things are heating up there. Back behind Mike Bliss, as you see Jack Sprague trying to drive out of sight from the front of Bliss's Ford. Now that distance is only about 12 truck lengths, but from here it looks like a mile. Yeah, there's one other thing that's happened right now. There's a small cloud up here. You can see that the racetrack is in shade right now, and some of the trucks that might have had a handling problem may get a little bit better with the uh, shade on the racetrack. Here you can see the lead that Rutman does have. Let's check with Ralph Shaheen. Randy McDonald out of the infield care center. Randy, what happened with you and Boris said, and are you all right? I don't really know. Uh, you know, one lap to go there, halfway. You know, I have to stay on the bottom. He bumps into me twice, and uh, coming off the corner, I look, he's not there, so I don't know if somebody must have turned him around or something, but I, mean, I just hold my line, staying low, and there's only a lap left in the session. And, I, I don't know, a little anxious, I guess. And, and we're holding our own. I mean, it's been a tough weekend. You know, we've just been working hard trying to repair from the crash we had in practice. I mean, terrible. I mean, but anyway, I thank Bob Blake for giving us a chance to be in here. I saw it coming. I just braced myself. I didn't think he'd do it, but... Manny McDonald done. And Mike, one more thing about Michael Dawkins, who's currently running in fifth place. His crew chief was telling me if they can get some long runs, they'll be in really good shape. At the end of that last segment of racing, they were running the same lap times just before the halfway break as the leader. Here's a look at Dockett. 
number 18, Mike Boddick, the crew chief. He's getting a little close to Rich Bickle here. Yeah, he's staying right there. In fact, moving up a little bit, it looks like. Chuck Bowen right behind Dawkin. As we see now, Jack Sprague has moved right in on Joe Rutman. Well, catching and passing is two different things right now. You can see Sprague really looking over the tailgate there of the 80 truck of Joe Rutman. There he goes to the inside. Not much of a fight there. No, no problem to pass there. Tyson just... Holyfield would look like Sunday school compared <laughs> to Sprague Rutman. They have had their altercations on track. And that was a surprisingly clean pass there. He just caught Rutman when Rutman's truck slid a little bit and Sprague just took advantage and moved. Last year at New Hampshire, Rutman was leading final lap. Sprague took him out this year at Orlando. Rutman repaid the favor, won the race. But here, no contact. Mike, you see the first two trucks. First two trucks there are, are moving along well, but the third place trucks in the contention. We're looking at David Green right here and Jay Sauter in the three truck. These guys have really gone at it pretty well today. The track positions everything right now. If they were up front, they could probably run with the lead trucks. David Green started this race in fourth place. It's his first start in the truck series. There are your three leaders. We'll be right back to Nazareth after this. Man, when y'all gonna drop back, please let me know. Look at Les, he'd move right back in this thing. Yeah, yeah, he's... But they better get going because Sprague has checked out. <laughs> huh? He heard the dinner bell. The uh, 19 and 6 is a real good okay. battle. And right behind them, Kathy, there's about six of those. The two right behind them just had contact. Great, that'd be great. Especially for our walk-in point viewers. Super. <laughs> okay, Ben, we're in position whenever you're ready for it. Trouble turn two, Boris up in the wall. Oh, he's going to keep going. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Remember last year at Milwaukee in the Grand National Race when everyone thought Dick Trickle would be the first-time winner? There was a first-time winner. It was Buckshot Jones over Mike McLaughlin by inches. And we'll be at the Milwaukee Mile for the Milwaukee 250 next Sunday here on CBS. And at Watkins Glen today in the Bush Grand National Series, McLaughlin beat his teammate Todd Bodine with pole sitter Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Spencer, and rookie Stephen Park filling out the top five. Saturday's companion race, Tim Connolly. Modified tour winner over Rick Fuller. Jack Sprague here at Nazareth with a one second lead on Joe Rutman. Mike Bliss, Rich Bickle, Michael Dock in the top five. Here's a look at Rutman in second place. Looking for his second win of the year. Trying to go the distance without a fuel stop. Well, I'm looking at Mike Bliss right now. He's turned it up just a little bit on Rutman. Here is Rich Bickle in the 17 truck. That's He's running it fourth. Fourth place for Bickle. And in the fifth place is Michael Dawkin in the car number 18. He's holding his own. Might have dropped back a little bit from where he was earlier on Bickle. Great run for Dawkin. He had a third at Monroe, Washington, his best finish of the year. That's Chuck, Chuck Bound there in the 99 X side. Jack Roush, Ford truck. Bound with two third place finishes this year. Mike Cope in trouble. 
A lot of smoke there. Caution flag is out. Mike was running in the 16th position. One of the trucks on the lead left. Oh boy, he could hold this thing up, guys. He's staying out there and pretty much in the groove. You know what this does? This gives Joe Ruckman a little bit better chance to stretch that mileage out. He did not stop for fuel just a while ago when all the lead trucks did. This might make the difference for him. Mike Cole finally hits pit road. Well, as Buddy said, certainly you don't use as much fuel running under caution. Here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania, 24 laps to go. We'll be right back. He's no problem. Okay, Boris. He's no problem. Boris, no smile. Look at the now. engine. My gosh, there's no oil left in it. How could that be? Mm -hmm. It's all on the racetrack. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has a lot of red paint on something. One to go. Great. That wow. quick, huh? Wow. Maybe they didn't put any oil in it. Not it. We'll know when they throw that green flag. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I won't take forever to find that out. Well, the initial thought was it was a rear end, but as you can tell, they're looking up underneath the hood and they're saying that there's not a lot of oil left in it. Uh, and of course, we all unfortunately probably know where all that oil went. Mm -hmm. and they're going to throw the green find where it went, but uh, Mike is climbing out of the truck if you want us to talk to him. Um, okay. He's sitting right here, so we'll be fine to do that when you come back. We're going right, right hooks now, and, and the bike. Ooh, bliss! Ooh, can we show that? Rick Morelli got in. in. I mean, Rick Crawford. Yeah. Caution is out. They just dropped the flag for the restart green, and as Mike Bliss slid up the racetrack in turn one, the caution waved quickly. Yes, it did. They might have detected some oil, maybe that was put down by the truck of Mike Cope. It was Cope that brought out the caution flag, and he's climbed out of his truck and out of the race. Rick Crawford just touched right on the back of uh, Bliss's truck as they started into turn one, and Bliss was very, very lucky not to spin out. Well, maybe that's what caused him to slide up. We'll take a look at it here and and see if we can figure exactly what did happen as it went into the turn. Right there, you can see him get hit just a little bit. But we, have a, uh, we have another replay I think we can key up that'll show you the two get down in the corner. I suspect Mike backed off thinking there might be oil there and, and maybe if he did get tapped from the rear. Well, we'll try the restart again, one to go. This race just 20 laps from conclusion. So apparently there was no oil on the racetrack. Ralph Shaheen. We're down here with crew chief Barry Dodson from Mike Bliss. Barry, what went wrong? Well, a big cloud came up uh, and tightened the truck back up. It's just about to get out of here. We get some sunshine back. We got a shot at him. Then a lap truck there wouldn't let us go. I don't know why you try to help these guys that don't run these tracks all the time so they can run better. And then they forget about it. <laughs> But we're having a good run. I want to say hey to Randy Renfro. He's in Bristol Memorial and his wife, Diane. We hope he's doing fine. Dick Bergen. Talk to Dennis Connor, the crew chief of the number 24. Jack Sprague in the lead. Asked him, Dennis, how is it now? What's he telling you? And he just smiled and he said, we finally got it good, real good. Lap times reflect that. His have been the fastest of anyone. Meanwhile, down pit road in number 80 pit, Joe Rutman talked to Randy Goss, said, can you beat that 24 truck? He said, we're watching his line very carefully and you never know about Rutman. That's the 80 truck right there on your screen. 
And the mention of Randy Renfro, he was injured in a crash at Bristol last week. Punctured lung. He's in the hospital recuperating, and all of us wish him the best and hope he's back on the circuit soon. Let's get this thing restarted. 20 laps, 19 to go as they come by. Jack Sprague with a good quick pull on the restart. And he has two truck lengths on Joe Rutman. Bliss is third, Bickle is fourth, Dockin is fifth, Bound is sixth, Hornaday seventh. And Compton and Reigns, that yellow truck. Corelli is tenth. Well, they can see home from here. Yeah, now you're going to find out who has the muscle. There is no strategy from here on. It's just good brakes, good acceleration, and a truck that will stay on the bottom part of the racetrack through the uh, ripple strip that they turn in there right on the white line. The front seven trucks have cleared traffic, and they run single file down this back straightaway out of turn three and headed for four. There they are. And it was important that they clear that traffic, the lap traffic, as quickly as they could, Mike, because of it basically being a one-groove racetrack. We've seen some side-by-side -side racing, but the fastest way around this racetrack, there's only one groove, and that's primarily on the inside, especially through the turns. And the quicker they could get around that lap traffic, the better they were. They could breathe a sigh of relief. Top 10 and single file now coming up next here on CBS. Final round of the FedEx St. Jude Classic. Stay tuned for that one. Mike, you can see the sun is back on the racetrack. Barry Dobson has to be smiling just a little bit because he said Bliss is really good when the racetrack is hot and slick. But when it's shaded just a little bit by cloud cover, he does not have the truck that can win. Right now, there's sun in turns two, three, and four. Shade in turns five and turn one. Ron Boy. Hornaday's caught Chuck Bound. Oh, man, they've been beating on each other for a couple of laps. Let's see what's going to happen here now. Hornaday has been all over Chuck Bound. Hit him going into turn four. Again, turn coming off of turn five, but he still couldn't make the pass. Ned's kind of feisty. When they started hitting, he started hitting me. Easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hornaday, we saw him try to make the pass in the grass down there at turn one. Now Bound's able to pull away a little bit. But here comes Hornaday back. He had a big run on Chuck Bound and actually got down in the grass. This is for sixth place. That roof cam is wonderful there. That really is what it looks like. If you were in that truck racing right now, trying to catch Chuck Bound, this is what it looks like. If you turn in the turn four there, you can see they both accelerate out towards the front straight away. Great camera shot. 14 laps to go. And up front, Jack Sprague is starting to stretch it out. Just a truck length or so each lap. That's what he needs to do is just drive smooth and try to build that lead a little bit as we look out at the front end of Mike Bliss truck. Down towards turn one, you can see him go across the ripple strips right out against the wall. Now you see the walk over there as they turn right down to the bottom of the racetrack. Drift out just a little bit and then turn right back on the white line as they start off the corner. You see Bickle is staying pretty close there on Bliss as Bliss moves up on Rutman. And here's Hornaday. He has the measure of Chuck Bound down into turn four. But Bound's going to try to come back on the inside. <laughs> we saw that move earlier today. Yeah. Hornaday tried it on spray. Oh, they got together. But Man. Bound gets the best of Here comes Hornaday back. <laughs> Go at it, guys. This is fun. <laughs> That's the one he tried on Jack Sprague. He couldn't make it work. Oh, there. a little touch there. He's got him just a little bit loose. He turned him loose long enough for him to get control. Oh, oh. gone. Hornaday is gone, taking Stacy Compton. And the rest of the field tries to squeeze by. I don't think Dan Press made it through. And, of course, the caution will come out. A little uh, flame here coming out of Hornaday's truck, but once he cranks it up, that'll go away. He and Chuck Bound were racing hard, and one of those bits of contact coming out of turn three put Hornaday around. You can see Hornaday trying to get it to move right now. No good yet. It's just starting to move down the back straightaway. Tremendous amount of damage to the number 16 truck of Hornaday. And you saw on that shifter, they had a cap on that shifter. I don't think you'll need that for victory lane today. Mike, that was a wreck that took a half a lap to develop. They were hitting and banging and pushing and shoving. You know it had to happen. I'd say five laps. 
because they, they were really going at it, uh -oh. those two guys were. Let's see what his thoughts are. Well, they're coming well I wouldn't run across the traffic. I kind of stay uh -huh. near my truck. Now, these trucks don't have brake lights. He's not it's a good thing because when Bound was there just ahead of Ron Hornaday, there are several things each driver can do to cause or avoid contact. And only the two drivers know for sure what happened. But the defending champion of this series, 10th in the points coming into this race, will have his third DNF of the year. Andy Hornaday looking on that Ron is okay. And the crew wants to see the replays, and we know you do too. Let's have a look at them. Okay, tries to move on the inside bound. They make contact right there. They're banging together. Okay. Here they are again. See Stacy Compton just behind Hornaday. Hornaday checks up. He gets rear-ended there. That turns him sideways. Stacy Compton, where does Reigns go in the 19 Pennzoil truck? You can see him to the inside, barely missing that wreck. But Compton gets caught up in it. And they're trying to go around, just oh. barely tagging him. There is. There you can see the contact being made. But Chuck Bound hangs on. There he hits him again, but he gets hit from the back then and spins Hornaday around. There you saw Dan Press. He did get by, just barely. We were all over this, folks. Another angle here. <laughs> you can see it was already sideways when that one took place as Hornaday got tapped from behind by Stacy Compton. It was just good, close racing. Compton had somebody on his back bumper, so, you know, yeah. he had to go. He had Tony Raines right there. I tell you, Tony Raines come through there, not one scratch on that truck. That was amazing driving by Raines. Show you one more look at it. Wow. Yeah, Stacy Compton was trying, number 86 there, was trying to keep up his momentum because if he let off the gas, Tony Raines would have spun Absolutely. him. Too many trucks and nowhere to go. Nine laps to go. Don't worry, folks. They'll finish this one under green and we'll be there. Yeah, very nice, folks. Very nice. Wow. Ten lap rule. He did that before. Just did. Josh. And I will again. I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate the rule. Yes. Man. Uh huh. There's a shot you won't get many times. <coughs> Look at Compton's front valence. This actually broke in two. Yep. <laughs> Fourth time in the last five races that Hornaday's finished out of the top 20. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, our camera crew right that was here great, was great folks. Great there. camera work. Good work, Ned, spot nice. that before it started to happen, too. A nice yeah, replay tape, folks. Get, guys, did they get into the ambulance? Do we know? Who? Did those drivers get into the ambulance? Did they go to the hospital? Hornaday again? was walking around back yeah, there, and Compton went on back into the pits. Oh, Compton's on the racetrack. Compton's back on the racetrack. Compton's back yeah. the racetrack. Yeah. It was just Hornaday and Ralph, I don't know. He, he walked away from his truck and walked back. I think back he got in the wrecker. All right. I don't know. I'll check with his wife. I see her coming. Okay. We're in the garage area, Ben. Yeah, I, I see you. We uh, well, we were doing replays. I don't saw where they took them. Full gleam now. This is this is a Mike Bliss racetrack now. Well, well yeah, maybe, time. maybe. Huh? I don't think he has enough time. I don't. Well, he's no. got to get by Joe Rutman. That's going to take almost the rest of this race if he gets to him. Boy. Yeah. This has been fun, guys. Yep. Folks, if I don't see you after, boy, great shots, great mm -hmm. replays. Very, very nice. Thank you. Good work. Look great.
best sports coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Pringles, so fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Welcome back to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Seven laps to go. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ned Jarrett. Today started great for Ron Hornaday in a big presentation. He and his team got championship rings. But now, he is on the sideline. There's the presentation for Bob McKenna, president of Napa Auto Parts, to Ron and his entire 1996 championship winning team. But now, he has his fourth out of the top 20 finish in his last five races. Ralph? Ron, a frustrating way to end what was a positive day for you. What happened? It all started when we got down on that uh, first caution. You know, we didn't we did pit and selected not to. Thought we'd run out for the mileage we were getting, but uh, Napa Chevrolet was running good. Got up underneath Chuck Bowen, and uh, Renfro didn't wait for me, so he got a bad habit of that. So I really like the kid. Try to help him out. He's done. He ain't going to get no help from Ron Hornet anymore. Said Renfro, I believe he meant uh, Stacy Compton. Yeah. But as we saw from the replays, Compton had a bumper full of Tony Reigns right behind him. Wasn't much room for anybody to go there. We are back under green. It'll be five laps to go when they come by, and the sun is out full. That should benefit Mike Bliss from what Barry Dotson, his crew chief, tells us. But Bliss has a long way to go to try to catch mile track Jack Sprague. I don't think he has enough time to do it, Mike. He's got it work cut out just maybe getting the second place right now. You can see Joe Ruffman as we go right along here with uh, Bliss. He's not really moving in on Ruffman that quick. In fact, Ruffman might be moving in on Jack Sprague a little bit. He did up in turn three. Now as he goes into turn four, he moves in a little bit closer. Rick Pirelli comes. has passed Chuck Bowne. That's for position. Here we come with four laps to go. The green truck is spraying. There's Corelli completing the pass on Chuck Bowne. Moves him up into sixth. There's David Green now trying to make a pass on Chuck Bowne. And Jay Sauter just behind now. So this race is far from over. Back up front where Sprague holds a three truck like an advantage on Joe Ruttman. You won't find these two at the same Christmas party. <laughs> and right behind them is Mike Bliss. From Bliss looking ahead to Rutman. Turn one. Three laps to go. Bliss moves up closer. Got it down to a trunk, truck lap as they head down the back straightaway. I just don't know. Rutman's going to make this truck as wide as he possibly can. And don't count out Bickle there in fourth place. Pickle on that black and orange Chevrolet racing points just out of your screen. Here is Sprague. He's won six of the nine mile track races and five of the last six, including this race last year. Two laps to go. The race is for second. Rutman third in the points. Bliss sixth in the standings coming in here. And it looks like Rutman's going to make it all the way on the second half without taking on fuel. I'd say right now he's got one eye on the racetrack, one eye on the fuel gauge, but right now he's going right along. You can see the truck under full power. White flag. Last lap. And Bliss is all over Rutman for second place. Seventh is the only other spot in contest. Chuck Bound and David Green. Well, Mike, here it is. This is for second place. You see Bliss looking to the outside. No way. And Bickle is there. He has caught the two fours. Off turn five to the checkered flag. Six of the last seven mile track races go to Jack Sprague. Rutman holds off the board of Bliss for second. With fourth going to point leader Rich Bickle. Fifth, a great run for Michael Dockin. And Rick Corelli climbs up to sixth place within the last five laps. Then Chuck Bound and David Green and Jay Sauter. And finishing tenth would be the 19 truck of Tony Raines. Mile Track Jack. It's an apt nickname. Well, I tell you what, when he smells that checkered flag, that 24 truck of, of uh, Sprague is very, very hard to catch. And the Hendrick Motorsports truck. No, Rick Hendrick is watching down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Be very proud of the effort put forth by his team here today. It's the sixth top five finish and the second victory of the season for Sprague. You know, good motors, but Dennis Conner does a great job of setting that truck up, too. 
FedEx St. Jude Classic. Final round coverage coming up next year on CBS Sports. Sprague says that Dennis Connor, I asked him uh, when I saw him Tuesday, is he a coach? Is he a cheerleader? Or is he a calming influence? Jack says, Dennis calms me down. He said, he helps me run my pace. Great combination. Jack Sprague in victory lane. Here's Dick Bergeron. Well, he doesn't even have his helmet off yet, but he's accepting the congratulations of crew members and officials. Jack, wild ride this afternoon. Well, I tell you what, these guys did a heck of a job. It's a brand new truck. Quaker State Chevrolet ran great all day. Man, I can't say enough for Rick Hendrick and his whole organization. Give me great stuff to race with. I kind of kind of been feeling bad because, you know, we've had so many chances to win, but haven't nailed the finish. And partly my fault and partly just stuff you can't control. And today was the day she stuck and we nailed the finish and won this thing again. He sure did. Terrell Shaheen. Joe Rutman, how much gas is left in this thing? Boy, I don't know. We was running in high gear. We was doing everything we possibly could. Tom told us uh, he's our engine man, Gant, and he said, we can make it. And I asked him about 10 times, and he says, well, you know how to save gas. I don't know how to save gas, you know. So the, the cautions at the end, I'm sure, saved us. And, uh, and Goss and Rich and uh, Matt and, and Ken and uh, Scott and all the boys just did a fabulous job. And without this uh, LCI uh, unit here, we'd been in trouble. This old Ford truck kept perking. The old green one was running pretty good. He was, we were a little tight, and we couldn't get close to him is what our problem was. And, but uh, maybe next time. Mike Joy. Final round, FedEx St. Jude's Golf Classic for Memphis coming up next year on CBS as Jack Sprague receives the accolades in victory lane. Sprague in a Chevy, then Rutman and Bliss in Fords, Bickle's Chevrolet and Dockin in the Dodge. There's a look at your top 12. Rich Bickle hangs on to the point lead, but Jack Sprague will close in. It was 64 points coming into Nazareth, but Sprague with that win will knock about 10 out of that, 20 make it 44 behind. Then Rutman, Mike Bliss, Chuck Bound, and Kenny Irwin in the point standings. So for Ned Jarrett, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergeron, and Ralph Shaheen, I'm Mike Joy saying so long from Nazareth Speedway, where Jack Sprague has won the 1997 Napa Auto Care 200 for the second year in a row. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the Daytona 500.